Hey there, welcome to the best resource online to learn and master React by building multiple projects. An in-depth React course that start right from the basics and increase its level topic by topic, project by project. It's an in-depth course that follows project building approach. We start with to-do list manager, understand about basic fundamental concept of React and implement on it. Then we move forward, play with API and try to work on a full-fledged movie information website. The app is going to have multiple pages. We start working with React Router, understand more about APIs, understand more about Tailwind CSS to implement our designing. Moving forward, we start working on our major project, which is a full-fledged e-commerce application. As usual, we are going to understand the core React topic but also we are going to integrate different tools and libraries about React. We work with React Router, work with Tailwind CSS, talk more about Context API. Not only this, we work with external libraries like Toastify and we create our own fake backend to display multiple products, work with login, work with authentication and have a proper dashboard and order history. This is going to be a massive project that can be included in your resume and portfolio easily. Not only this, moving forward, we work with Firebase to design our blog. We work with simple projects such as Word Counter, understand more about Redux and Context API to design a shopping cart and lot more stuff. It's a full-fledged React course that starts from the basics as said and learn things by building multiple projects. Not only this, we deploy each of our project online so you can show live demo to all the potential recruiters as well as your freelance client by adding them on your resume or your portfolio. The aim of this course is to push you to be among the top 10% of fresh React developers. We not just talk about the core React concept but also explore everything around it. We talk about custom hooks, work with multiple APIs, talk about context API, not only this, we talk about Redux, understand about Tailwind CSS, work with Firebase, work with testing. Not only this, we create our own fake backend with JSON server and also work with authentication. Not only this, there are a lot of external libraries that we work throughout the course. Okay, that's great, but why you should learn React right now? Well, this is the best time to learn React. Every major big company is invested in React. Not only this, every early stage or funded startup is in or moving towards React somehow. Talk about Meta, Uber, Walmart, Airbnb or any other company you name it, chances are they are invested in React with their production application. So this is the best time to be in the React ecosystem. Now you might be thinking, why this course? There are multiple courses online, why I should start with you? Well, one thing I can assure you, by the end of this course, you will have solid React knowledge. Not only this, you will have full potential to build, test and deploy your own web application online. Not only this, you will have multiple projects to demonstrate in your resume as well as in your portfolio. So you will be ready for every different challenge that you are going to face after completing the course. Once you enroll in this course, you get access to 200 high quality video lectures, access to over 35 hours of content, access to all the reading links, all the code sources that we use during the lecture as well as for our project. Not only this, you get access to all the assignment, quizzes, exercise that we have throughout the journey. As prerequisite, I strongly recommend you to have knowledge about HTML, CSS and JavaScript. These are must. Since React is built on top of JavaScript, I strongly recommend to have the knowledge of JavaScript as well as the other two. Don't forget to check out the course description page as well as curriculum for more information. That's all about the course, but who am I? Shobham this side and I have been writing code for a while work with several startup, multiple freelancing projects and build several best-selling programming courses. With over 50,000 students online, few thousand feedback, I have been doing this for a while, so you can trust on me. Ready to start your React journey from basics to advanced with projects? Enroll into this course now and I'm really excited to see you inside.
Hey guys, welcome to the course and I'm really excited to have you on board. You have made a wise choice and I'm glad you took your first step to unlock a new skill. All the best, stay consistent throughout the course and if you have any doubt, feel free to use question answer section and I will be there for you. Now one small thing that I really wanted to talk about. Udemy might ask you for a review at very early stage, maybe after first few lectures only. Don't forget to leave a review. You can check lectures, curriculum, resources, announcement and lot more. I am always there for you for question answers, for advice, for messages or any other problem. Reviews are really important. They keep me motivated to update this course regularly, send regular announcements about the community, keep adding more lectures on new topic and most importantly to reply all the questions as fast as possible. Sometimes in couple of minutes, sometimes in less than few hours. Moving forward, I want to talk about the video player. So there are few settings that are quite important with the video player that will help you to have a better viewing experience throughout the course. So there are few settings like playback speed, video resolution, audio setting, then we have screen size and also about saving notes. If you think I am talking too fast or I am talking too slow, what you can utilize is this playback button and then change the speed of this lecture. This is pretty important for students who want to change the speed of this lecture. The next and the most important setting is video resolution. So all you have to do is just click on the setting button and then you have options to select different video resolution. By default the resolution is set by Udemy according to your country as well as internet speed. So I strongly recommend to check video resolution whenever you are watching the lecture. It is recommended to select the highest quality possible. The next thing is audio setting. So maybe you want to increase or decrease the volume, make sure to utilize this button. Now there are chances that even after changing your setting, you are facing issue with audio as well as video quality. So one quick solution that I recommend is change your browser. Sometimes because of the browser, there are issue with server regarding audio as well as video quality. Even after changing the browser, if you are still facing the issue, I strongly recommend to contact Udemy support. They will troubleshoot and will help you with this issue. The next setting that I want to talk about is this notes option. So throughout the course, there will be several concepts as well as lectures where you want to add a bookmark or a note. So this option is going to help you a lot. Also later on, you can access all your bookmark as well as notes in this note tab which is going to help you a lot at one single position. The next common setting is the screen size. So maybe you want to increase the size of your current player. All you have to do is just utilize these two buttons and you are good to go. That's all about the player. Now without wasting any time, let us get started with our first lecture. Stay consistent, whole course is now yours. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back, Shubham this side and welcome to the journey of React. Before moving forward towards the installation part, working with all the core concept, working with projects, let us talk about resources. Because there are going to be many documentation that we touch, there are multiple topics that we are going to figure out, there are multiple tools that we are going to use, code files and lot of other stuff. So I have created a proper centralized storage or I should say a sheet where I have kept everything. So it's easy for you to access code files, project demos, anything that you need regarding the course, I have put them at one place. All you have to do is just jump onto our resource directory. You can visit unwiredlearning.com slash resource slash react and this will give you access to the entire resource section. Now here on the resource part, we have our documentation, you will see all type of other links that we talk about uh, during the course. You will see all the extension, any type of setting that we do or the code file about the course, project demos, everything. So you don't have to worry much, everything I have kept at one place. Now remember, 
initially we are going to move slow with the course because we are going to install lot of thing we are going to do lot of setup according to our system and according to the project so initially for the first few lectures you will see our growth is slow but then as we pick up the pace we will understand about concept project concept projects and move forward at a decent pace remember initially there are lot of installation and setup because this is going to be a big course so make sure you are ready for this the first thing is done talking about the resource part where you can access it the next thing about our code files so i have kept every lecture files so that means maybe you are working with any type of lecture where i am talking about some concept and you want the code file how to access that well you can access it here if you jump onto the resource you will see i have lecture code files you can directly jump here and each code file holds some type of number so with lecture name i have introduced some type of number so for example we are talking about something related to jsx or something related to react basic you are going to see a number now this number is not the lecture number but the number in your title so for example this 005 is going to hold the entire code file for that particular lecture or maybe later on we are going to talk about something related to tailwind css or react router or firebase you will see folder number or folder code in the lecture title itself for example we are working on a lecture titled as react router setup 054 so that means this is the file that you need to access to get the code part for that particular lecture so that's how you are going to access the lecture code i have also kept the project demos and project code separately so maybe you want to work with the task made demo all you have to do is jump here and you can access the demo here maybe you want to access the cinemate demo so all you have to do is jump here access the demo and it will be quite easy for you everything is at one place maybe any other demo you have it here maybe you want to talk about assignment i have kept it here maybe you want to talk about any other guide that we are going to deal with yep i have kept it here for example during the deployment process things are going to be different i have kept everything step by step so you can get here access every information maybe you are not able to understand this right now but during the deployment lecture this guide will be helpful uh, maybe anything else maybe during the testing lecture this is going to be the file that you are going to need i have kept other resources regarding the testing everything at one place so you don't have to worry much even the common doubts that you are going to get common errors i have kept everything according to the topic at one place so i hope you got the idea why this resource is important where to get your lecture code your project code and project demo so that's all about how to access everything now one important point is how to download this code well there is one quick step you can just directly jump here either you can clone it on your local system if you understand about git and github or you can just download the zip for everything so you will have access to all the code file in one place that's the easiest step you can do that the other step is you can click on dot on your keyboard or you can just change your github.com to github.dev this particular link will be changed if you press enter this is going to open everything online in a vs code environment so let me select the theme save everything so yeah maybe i want to access information about 005 title i can access it here i can access all the files you can see here maybe i want to access anything else uh, it's it's online editor so i can change the setting i can change the font size everything according to my own requirement so let me maybe open anything else maybe 054 open this any type of file that i want to access i get access here so this is an important thing that you can use just change github.com to github.dev the other thing is you can also go with github1s.com so it's a open source project that help you to convert everything into a proper online editor so you can see now i can access this suppose i want to access the file fifth i can get here get here i have everything so i hope you got the idea how to access your code either you can download it locally 
on your system or you can just go with dot dev or 1s solution that will give you access online similarly you can access code for your project maybe you want to access the code for your code book project you can jump here you have access to everything here uh, you just need to access according to your own requirement either directly or you can download it or the best thing you can just click on dot or maybe go with github dot dev and it is going to open the entire project code with an online editor awesome that's all about the resource part that's all about the code access part code download part now i want to give you quick advice about the course the first thing is pretty simple make sure you watch all lectures on full screen high quality uh, if you have 180p available make sure you to watch all the lectures with 180p the second thing during the entire course you are going to face lot of errors with all the projects maybe with concept make sure you search on google remember this is going to be a big course chances are you get some doubt about a topic chances are you want to read something more i strongly recommend to search on google google not only help you to learn things but it create an habit how to be independent once you get into a company once you start working as an intern as a freelancer no one is going to help you you cannot take support from anyone you need to be independent and that's where this habit comes into picture with all my courses i try to build this habit among student just understand being independent as a developer is priceless you will learn things from course you will build projects through course but once you understand how to solve any type of error how to extend your knowledge through reading online or how to search about the exact error find that exact solution it's irreplaceable your other competitive student can learn things maybe they can develop the project but this habit will bring you in top 1% remember this so make sure if you get an error search about it maybe you want to read something search about it maybe you want more examples about that particular topic search about this on google this habit will be a game changer for you the next thing make sure you don't rot all the concept or any type of syntax just practice you will automatically remember everything you will understand things so don't try to rot or memorize things just practice and if you just want to read anything again or if you want to check the syntax again search on google or check out the course again but don't try to rot them don't try to memorize line by line just search things are available online things are available in the course or just access the code file don't try to memorize them the other thing you can also maintain your regular progress on social media what you can do is you can uh, post things online on twitter or maybe linkedin or maybe instagram wherever you are comfortable so you can follow something like day 1 you have learned this or practice this day 2 you have done this or maybe whenever you do a project try to post it online with your screenshot or live demo so it's easy for me as well as other student as well as your peer to see your progress maybe you completed a project make sure just post about the project give a brief introduction about the project your live demo some screenshot tag me and this will help you to showcase your project to the world for projects i recommend linkedin and for regular progress i recommend twitter that's all i'm super excited about the course make sure you access the resource everything will be there and now let us start our journey with all the installation setup and then concept and project thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one Hey there Shobham the side and welcome to the react journey Now before diving deep with the concept assignment all the fun projects we need to answer three common question about react What is react why you should learn react and what are the prerequisite that you should be aware of or i should say the topic that you should be familiar with Let's start with the first one what is react Well it's a javascript library remember it's not a framework it's a library now you will see the comparison of react with either angular or vue both of them are framework 
then why we talk about React everywhere? Well, React is a library, but we can install different pieces and then it behave as a framework. So there are several concepts that we will explore with the help of different packages. Like for router, we are going to utilize React Router DOM. Or for state management, we are going to utilize Redux. So there are certain bit and pieces that you require as a framework. So it's a library, but we can install different other packages and together it work as a framework. The other important thing is React is developed and maintained by Facebook. Now it's important to know this because now you are assured that there is going to be some growth in future as well. There will be new features, there will be bug fixes. So it's going to grow in future as well. Now these were some basic information. Let's talk about something important, which is components. Don't worry, we are not going to dive deep into technical and coding stuff right now, but we just need to understand that entire website, whenever we are working with React project, everything is divided into components. So we have our website, we will divide everything into small parts and that small part is component. Why we divide them? Well, it is going to help us a lot. We don't need to re-render things. And if things are divided into small chunks, we can reuse them. Let me give you a quick idea. Suppose I am on this website. It's a simple e-commerce website, which have multiple information. Now here, what are the component basically? You can see this header can be a component, which is our navigation bar, something that we can reuse or which can be broken into small pieces. So if I talk about this whole page, this header is going to be my first component. Now later on, I can treat this as a section of hero section, which is my second component. Uh, this can be another component. I can divide them into small pieces. This card can be a component. So everything can be divided into small pieces. Before that, let me talk about fairly simple thing. My header, that is my navigation bar is a component and my footer is a component. Okay, great. Let's talk about these two only. Now, if I jump onto any other page, I'm going to reuse them. What I mean by this, if I go on to maybe login page, let's say login. Here, I still have this header. I have this footer as well. So that means I don't need to rewrite these code. These are already there. I am going to reuse them. It's a component. Maybe I want to go on to registration page. It's a component. Or maybe I just want to check all the ebooks. Here we have the same header and the same footer. So basically we are not re-rendering this. All of this is reusable. We are not writing this particular piece of code again and again. We create a small component for header. We create a component for footer. And then on all the pages, if we need to use them, we can just add that particular component. I hope you got the idea. If you come from a HTML and CSS and JavaScript background, if you have multiple pages, you basically need to write them again and again. But with React, we have divided things into component and we can reuse them anytime. Okay, that's great. I hope you got the idea. Basically component is small part of code that we can reuse anytime without writing it again and again. The other important thing that you are going to hear is single page application. Yes, this entire website is designed on React and it's a single page application. That means there is only one file index.html that we are going to load. That's it. What I mean by this, if I go on to this products page, uh, isn't this a page? If I go on to this login page, this is also a page, right? Well, behind the scene, all of this is rendered by React on that same page itself. Okay, this is getting confusing. What is this single page? When I say single page application, I mean that behind the scene, there is only index. Rest, everything is loaded in the form of component. We are not loading any new page. When you work with any other thing, like maybe with HTML, CSS and JavaScript, you basically render a new page every time. So you have an index page, you have a product page, you reload them. But here in the case of React, we don't reload them. 
Let me give you a quick example. Let me right click here, click on the inspect part. So we have this header, we have this footer. And if I go on to this ebook section, you can see this is the part which got highlighted. That means we just rendered this main section. The header was already rendered. The footer was already rendered. Okay, let me try to go on to the login page. Make sure to have a view here. Login. This section got the blink. That means header was as it is, footer was as it is. Let me try to do certain stuff. What I can do is get here inside the code and let me try to uh, write something like test. Okay. Great. Now, if I go to different page, uh, let's say, let me go to home. You can see it's still test. I visited a different page. Still, this is the same. That is test because we are not re-rendering everything. We are just rendering the component that is new to that particular page. Okay. I hope you got the idea. So the conclusion is react is a single page application which has the ability to render different components, add them and remove them on the go as per our requirement. We don't need to reload or send new page request. We have these components and if there is any change, we can just render that particular component and rest everything is going to remain same. Now, if I just entirely refresh the application, you can see now I have my code book back. That's great. I hope you got the idea of what is React. Even if you don't know about this, you can build the application, but this was important for interview purpose. Let's talk about our second important question. Why React? Well, I usually give the reason as structured. It's properly structured and we have lot of flexibility to make our own structure. So that means there is some basic structure by default with react. There is some naming convention, but with the rest of the other stuff, we have the flexibility to change ourselves. We have the flexibility to, to follow stuff according to our company. So this is an important feature that I think helped many companies as well as freelancers. We want to follow certain stuff. That's great. We have our own flexibility. That's also great. So it maintained the entire community. The second thing is reusability. You can see everything is divided into component. So when things are divided into component, we don't have to write things again and again. For example, I just wrote the code for card once and now I can just replicate this again and again with different information. React behind the scene just change the information. We call them as properties. We are going to talk about this once we get into the coding part, but these are properties for this card. So I have three, four properties. Like I have property for my image, title, description, star rating, and price. I designed the card once and I gave these five properties to each card. That's it. And it's everything is done in loop. So I don't have to write again and again. See, I have used this card 15 times here, but I don't need to code them. I created a component as card and that's it. I am reusing it. So I need to focus on less coding, but more on reusability, which is great. The other thing is React also spent good time in market. There are multiple companies using it. So the community built around React is pretty massive. Even if you get into Stack Overflow for any type of doubt, you see support from community. There are enough blogs, there are enough doubt, common doubts that you are going to see in future. So if you have any doubt, you try to Google it, you will see multiple type of response from people. Why? Because it's been long there. These type of common things happened before and the support is beyond any other framework. The last point that I usually talk about is performance. Now, if you see things are not re-rendering again and again, performance automatically improve. For example, if I go onto the home page, you can see it instantly load. I know there are certain backend stuff that takes time. For example, this image part because it is rendering from a server. But if I talk about this whole structure, it loads instantly. If I go onto the login, you can see register. These stuff load quickly 
and this performance is important when you work on a large scale application. That's great. That's all the important reason that I hold that why you should learn React. Now let's talk about the third one. What should you know? Like the prerequisite with React. So I highly recommend that you should have knowledge about HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Yep, all three. HTML, CSS, why? Because at the end of the day, we are going to use HTML to structure stuff, CSS to design stuff. You should have good knowledge about all the tags. You should have good knowledge about Flexbox. You should have knowledge about the basic stuff like margin, padding, everything we are going to use. So I strongly recommend before diving deep with React, have knowledge about them. If I talk about JavaScript part, I think you should first do any type of JavaScript practice. We are talking about loops, function, DOM, then with all the higher order array methods like for each, map, filter, reduce, you should also have information about arrow function. We are also going to work with APIs. So you should have information about async, await, work with fetch API, have information about import, export modules. So, yep, you should have information about JavaScript as well. So that means before diving deep with React, I strongly recommend first learn about HTML and CSS. Also go dive with JavaScript and then get into React. Please try to get learn from maybe YouTube, maybe any other course, maybe my course as well. I have courses on all these topic, but first learn about HTML, CSS have practice on JavaScript and then work with React. Ultimately, we are trying to treat React as a framework, which is above JavaScript. So you should have information about them. That's all. I know I took a bit longer than usual, but it was important. Now in the next lecture, let us try to set up our environment. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us talk about our environment setup. Now do we need to install certain software? Yes. The first thing we need to do is we need to install node. It's important because ultimately we need to install the packages. We need to install everything around node itself. So the first thing is install the LTS version, which is long term support version. You don't need to understand what node is, but you need this behind the scene. So just install the LTS version, avoid current version or the most latest one. This is tested with react and with other packages as well. Just install this on your system. Follow all the common processes that is required. That's it. Once that is done, you also need to install the code editor. It can be anyone, but I strongly recommend the visual studio code. It's pretty popular right now and the development is great. You get tons of extension to make your task or regular coding easy. So I strongly recommend to install the VS code. Once that is done, create a folder on your desktop. What I mean by that is on your desktop, create a folder called as practice. So whatever the project that we are going to create will be inside this particular folder itself. So we don't have to search here and there. Everything will be at a single place. So just create this folder, which is practice. That's it. That's the basic setup. Now let's talk about the other stuff. That is how we are going to check version and talk about VS code setting. So get here, open your CMD in the same folder. So this is our command prompt. If you are working with Linux or Mac OS, then make sure you use terminal and make sure when you open this one, it should be inside this particular folder, which is our practice folder. And if I do node and dash V press enter, you can see I'm using 16 version. That's it. Anything above 14 will be fine. Anything above 12 will be fine basically, but try to use 16 or greater than 16. Great. That's the first test. That means my node is active on my system. The other thing is now let us open our VS code. I have already installed it. So I just need to do code dot that will open VS code in this particular folder itself. 
So let me press enter. Great. So this is the VS code, which is currently inside my practice folder. Let me zoom in a bit. Yeah, that's great. Let me close this, get started. And I'm currently inside my practice folder. Okay, this is done. So that means our node is installed, our VS code is installed and we have created a folder and we are inside that. Let's talk about some extensions. What should you install? So the first one I recommend is auto import. This basically help us to import stuff here and there and we are going to import lot of thing as we grow. The other thing I recommend, strongly recommend is this extension called as ES7 React Redux React Native something like this. So I strongly recommend to install this one. I guess by in future they might change the name to ES8 or something like that. So currently it is named as ES7 plus React uh, will be by this creator. Great. Uh, make sure to install this one. I guess in Telecode will be default with everyone. So these are the three common extensions that I recommend. The next thing I recommend is a theme just to improve our experience. So theme and also the icon pack. So I strongly recommend to download the material icon pack. So if you search about this material icon, yep, material icon theme. Just install this, this will give you a bit flexibility with all the type of icon that you see. So um, we are going to work with JavaScript file, HTML file, CSS file. So we have better icons. That's great. And then you can just explore multiple themes. I'm currently using material theme icon. You can just get into your file, get into preference and then color theme. And here you will have option to select the theme that you want to activate. I'm using this one. That's it. That's all about the theme and extension that I recommend. Now let's talk about some setting. So currently we don't have any file. No worries. Click on the setting icon and then get onto the setting part. Yep. Here you need to search one quick setting, which is emit and include language, something like this. And here you need to add JavaScript, JavaScript react. So if you observe, I have added this item as JavaScript and my value is JavaScript react. Uh, I think they have given this an example as well. This is important. Now why this is important? Well, we are going to work with react files that are going to save as .js itself. And then we are also going to work with JavaScript file, which is going to save as .js itself. So we want certain react features with JS file. And this is where this helps. So make sure you do this change. One other small change that is recent with the VS code and only available with the latest version is sticky scroll. Sticky scroll and make sure you activate it. I will talk about this later when we start writing code, but make sure you just enable this and I will pinpoint it later when I start writing code. When the code base is big, this is going to help a lot. So that's all. That's all the setting for now. And we don't need anything else. So that's it. That's all you need for our basic setting. We need node to compile our react application. We need editor to write code and we need extensions to make ourselves efficient and themes icons to just improve the visibility. That's it. Thank you for following. And in the next lecture, let us start our journey with the basic boilerplate code. That's all for this one. I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us start our journey with the project development. So the first thing that you should remember is that we are going to work with documentation and you are going to get confused because of multiple links. So there are currently two different documentation by official react, which is reactjs.org. And the second one is beta.reactjs.org. So this is the newer version, which is currently under development. You can see, I guess in next few months, they will uh, release this one. But 
focus on this one only because this is where uh, new content will be new information will be so this is the official documentation so maybe you want to read stuff you can just get here search about it and this things will be fine so that's great now let's talk about how to start our project we have been discussing things but how to actually start our project now there are multiple step to do that so with all these multiple step what react did is they created a package for this so we call this package as create react app so all we have to do is run this command npx create react app and then your project name and that's it they will structure a basic react app let's try to do that let me get here let me first clear my screen let me go with npx now remember you are also going to see a command like npm npx is basically executing something npm will be managing something so let's say npx create dash react dash app space and here you need to give your project name so if i need to create or have all my files inside this particular folder itself then i need to use dot that will give me all the files here but i want to give a project name so let's say task mate so if i give this particular project name all the files will be inside this particular folder you can give any other name this is the name that i have i can give a code book or maybe some codify any project name that you have in your mind you can give it so let's give taskmate itself it's easy to remember for me so if i press enter now it is going to do a lot of stuff make sure you have internet connection you can see these are the things that it is going to install uh, react react dom then react script so the thing is if we do things individually then we have to install tons of stuff one by one so what react official facebook did is they created this app now if you just open the github repository for this you can see it's by facebook it's create react app they also created a documentation for this specific create react app itself so here you will have all the information about create react app this is great because you don't have to do every single thing yourself i hope you got the idea okay let me get here i think it's still installing it is going to take time maybe 5 minute or 7 minutes i'm going to fast forward it and that's done so we have happy hacking that means our installation is done and one thing i want to demonstrate is let me get into my folder which is my practice folder and here you can see i have a taskmate folder which is basically my project and here if you see this is 216 mb okay that's pretty big if i open this one here are pretty basic files now everything that we are going to do will be inside our taskmate so one thing you can do is you can just shift your folder you can see cd and then your project name so what i can do is i can go with cd and then i will have my taskmate folder so i should be inside my taskmate if you don't want to do that you can cross this get here open your command prompt inside this that should work fine so let me get here i want to discuss something so here after the installation you can see certain stuff you have npm start npm run build npm test eject what are these well these are some basic command so when we are working on our project we want to check the deployment server so we can run that project locally that's where this npm start come into picture we want to create a production ready app so we convert our source code into a production code that we call with the help of npm run build then we are going to run test cases so for to start our test runner we are going to use npm test and then we have this eject which is i usually say disclaimer to this don't use this because it is going to remove all the dependencies that we have and other stuff so and we cannot go back so just avoid this for now so these are the basic command and this is the basic 
whole structure okay it's good time for us to jump onto our code editor so what you can do right now is scroll down just say code dot and it is going to open our folder let me close this one and that's it that's all this stuff that we need to talk about we have our node module we have some public folder we have source code we have readme git ignore our package json and there are multiple files everything is done with the help of this create react app now if we don't have this package we need to do every single step ourselves we have multiple dependencies that we need to install one by one then we need to write a script for each individual one so it's a time taking task with the help of create react app things get simplified now since we only use this only one time like at the start of the project then we just build the project but to initiate this project we need that and we are going to use this every time if we are creating any new project it's like the foundation step the other thing that i want to talk about is what if i want to run stuff online currently i have installed this offline everything is offline that i have installed what if i want to run this online is there any solution i don't have a system properly or maybe i want to just have something online so that's where this whole stack blitz come into picture it's a great website that help us to run things online so all you have to do is just search about stack blitz react and they will have an option just to create your repository and that's it so they will have this whole setup ready now the great thing is they will give you the setup and then you can run all your code anything here on the website itself i don't recommend this to, for beginners to be honest as a beginner you should have information what you are trying to install because at the end of the day when you are going to work with company you will install things on your system you will write code on your system everything will be on your system so i don't recommend to do this right now once you have knowledge then you can use them for better purpose so yep this is a solution that runs online and it's great but i don't recommend to beginners you should know about this but not use this right now and if you want to install any package you can just enter stuff here and it is going to be added to our project stack blitz it's great when you want to use things online so that's it that's all the boilerplate stuff now let me get back here let me get back to the main thing that we are going to work which is our project there is certain stuff with our project that i will be talking about in separate lecture each individual file but for now you need to see how to open a terminal here either you can call all your commands here inside your task made folder on your command prompt or powershell or terminal whatever you are using or what you can do is you can utilize the vs code terminal itself you can use control backtick to open this terminal here itself and then you will have option maybe you have git bash powershell or anything else you can use it here itself so that's great that's the first step that you should be informed now the other thing is uh, before ending this lecture i want to see the result of this whole code that means the default website that we get with create react app so all you have to do is uh, open your terminal that's great and here you can say npm start now it's a script here so if you get into your package.json if you scroll down here let me close this for a while and here scroll down scripts and you have a script as start which basically call this react scripts start so if i open my terminal control backtick here remember when you close this it's basically minimize it's close the panel but when we delete this it kill the terminal so if i close and if i use control backtick it's there but it's minimized okay if i go with npm start it is going to start my server on localhost 3000 port and if you see so this is the default website that we get now this is going to stay running so if i do any type of change 
it will automatically show there. Let me try to do that. You don't need to understand code right now. So I'm just trying to show some changes. So let's say I have this edit src app.js save to reload and here let me write xyz. Let me save this one, get back here and you can see xyz is here. So that means every time I do any type of change, it basically reload itself. And let me open my terminal. You can see the message is still here and we are running it behind the scene. If you want to stop it, you can use control C to stop it and it's stopped now. And if I get back here, if I refresh, the server is gone. It's not going to load. So this happens. So we can just start it here, do all the development work. It's, it is going to run behind the scene. When things are done or maybe we want to restart it, we can use control C to trouble it and then restart if we want. So that's the basic stuff. Uh, my aim was to make you understand about create react app and all the other alternatives. That's all. Make sure you do that in this particular lecture itself. And let me undo the changes. Okay. Awesome. So in the next lecture, we are going to discuss about the entire project structure and the science behind this. So thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now in this lecture, let us talk about our folder structure and what happened behind the scene. So the first thing is there are multiple things that you are going to have here. You are going to have a node module, then your public folder, your source folder and few other stuff. Let me try to expand it a bit. Let me zoom it. So here this node module is basically a place, a folder where all your dependencies will be. Now this is going to be the heaviest folder actually because everything that we are going to install will be here and we don't share this. We basically don't share this because we maintain what we are going to install. For example, we have information that we are going to install this react. So we share this package.json which have information about the package as well as their version. Now, why we don't share this? It's maybe 200, 300 MB. If you remember, this whole folder is approx 269 MB. So it doesn't make sense to share this folder. What we can share is we have this package.json and we have the information what we have. So in one click, in one command line, if we are trying to share our whole project, they will be able to install everything. They don't need this 300 MB node module. So that's the important thing. Node module means basically all our dependencies will be stored here. Then you are going to have two folders, which is public and then source code. Public is basically everything that is visible to audience, to users, to anyone. So we currently have index file. We have our favicon. We have our logo basically here and then we have our manifest.json it is going to have information about name and then size of our icons basically used during PWAs and then we have our robots.txt this is great this is our public folder and we are not going to touch it right now so we have our index.html here basically so I'm going to talk about it later but this is our public folder. Then we have our source folder. Everything that we are going to do with react will be inside this folder ultimately. So yep, we are going to touch it. We are going to work with index.js. We are going to work with app.js. We are going to create all the components inside it. We are going to write test cases will be inside this. We are going to create pages, maybe work with any other package. Everything will be inside our src source folder okay that's great then we have our get ignore file maybe we are going to ship this project on github then it's important to ignore certain files like node module so if you open this you will see some default uh, dependencies which is that okay node module is not going to be pushed we also not going to push the build version and all the other stuff 
and then we have our package.json this is something important so this package.json basically have all the information about our project and its dependencies we have our project name the version we have all the dependencies we have the scripts so maybe if i'm saying npm start behind the scene this is the call this script is executed maybe we want to run multiple commands yep we can do that we can add multiple commands but if i say npm start all the commands will be executed together we are going to do that don't worry and then all the other information about our development so this is an important folder and because of this folder we can share our project and we can restart everything i am going to give you a quick demonstration let's say i have just this information and i don't have this node module if i delete this node module all i have to do is just do npm install and it will install all the packages again that means if you are sharing your project you don't need node module you can share all the other files and then they can download the other files which will be less than 1 mb and then they can just do npm install and all the packages and your node module will be there automatically so that's great that's the whole basic stuff now let's talk important stuff actually so what happened with this public and source code so if i run my server i guess it's already running on my localhost 3000 and if you're using wi-fi firstly this localhost can be access through any browser on your system you can use brave browser or you can use chrome you can use any other browser it will work i strongly recommend either to use chrome or brave nothing else it's it's headache to maintain stuff on multiple browser right now as a beginner once you have an experience once you have information it will be easy but as a beginner either start with chrome or brave the other thing is you have if you are using the same Wi-Fi on your cell phone on other system as well what you can do is you can access your whole web app this web app on your cell phone itself all you have to do is access it through this particular IP and port and it, you will get exact same result all the changes that you are going to save you will have access to them okay that's great information let me minimize this and let's talk about our source now what happened behind the scene is we are going to work with this index.js we are going to work with this app.js this css file and then other test cases and everything but if you remember i said that react is a single page application so at the end of the day what user is going to see is this index.html only and it currently holds this root so inside this root react is going to render all this stuff and this doesn't have anything else that means react is going to have some type of formula behind the scene it is going to convert all of this javascript all of this everything code all the code that you are working with all type of component or anything else it is going to bundle them up use some magic formula and then create a bundle.js now what i mean by this so let me get here click on inspect and if i scroll down you see it's a normal page you don't have any other information you have root app and everything so if you observe inside our root we got this app app div but if you get here in your public folder your index you don't have anything right now it's empty so what react behind the scene do is it insert all the code inside your app you now can see header images everything so this is done by react that's great but my aim was to make you understand okay where this bundle.js come into picture so if i go and click on inspect page source try to zoom in a bit here you can see the source code and you will see a script tag that include our static js bundle.js so this is the actual code behind the scene that bundles up okay it's pretty big actually everything is there now 
So that means this whole source code, that means source to source compiled is done and then it is attached to this index.html file with the bundle.js behind the scene. Now this bundle.js render all the stuff, all the with all the stuff I mean this app thing, this header, this p tag, a tag, anything that we are going to have inside our root. Now remember, if you just open your page source, you have nothing inside your root. Everything is rendered on the browser, on the load itself. When you inspect things, you will view them. But when you try to open their page source, it's empty right now. Even on our local file, everything is empty. But since the bundle.js is there, it is going to render stuff on the browser load itself. I hope you got the idea what happened behind the scene. Okay, things are complicated, but that's why it's fun. So let me do a quick revision. We have this whole structure. We have this node module with all the dependencies, public file, which includes our index.html. That is the single file that we are going to have. And then all the other small files like our favicon and logo. That's great. Then we have our source code, which is going to have all the react code. We are going to do all the stuff here. There are some useless files here that we are going to delete in future as we move forward. But this is the folder in which we are going to work. Now, remember index is important here. The first thing that react try to tackle is this index.js. When we try to say npm start, react tries to tackle here. When we load our domain, it is going to target our index.html. So make sure these indexes are important. Okay, that's great. These two folders are done. Then we have our .git ignore, then our package.json. This is important, like the most important thing. So that's all for this lecture. I hope you got the basic idea how the whole structure is done. You don't have to create it yourself, but you should have understanding about each part. Now in the next lecture, we are going to do the fun stuff. We are going to dive deep with SRC and start everything from basics. I hope this lecture was helpful. Now you have understanding about project structure. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us start our journey with coding part and we are going to start from basics. At this point of time, we got this stuff by default. Now most of this is not useful. For example, we are not going to utilize this logo.svg. So we need to remove that. Then we don't need these web vitals. We don't need this startup test.js. We don't need this setup test.js. So a lot of this here that we are trying to use call import is not required. But to explain what is required, what is not required will be difficult and what are these steps. So it's better what I can do is I can delete this. What if I delete the entire source code? Now remember my server is running and now I am going to get that I am not able to resolve this particular error. So if I jump onto my website right now. You can see there is an error compiled problem basically and I have message module not found which is about my src index.js that means react by default is looking for a source folder inside my project which is with a file index.js okay let's start this so let's in this whole directory where my public is there where my node module is there. Let me create a new folder called as src. Great. Now inside this, I need to create a new file. Let's say index.js. So that means react is going to get inside here, this index.js for all this stuff. And we are going to work with this particular index.js. Now we have one choice. Either we try to have all our code base inside this or we can divide stuff with the help of component. So remember everything is inside index.js but indirectly. So we create our app.js and then we import it. 
we create other components we import it so we import it into multiple files so if you remember the previous image previous bundle message we have multiple js file that is transpile or i should say source to source compile to bundle.js so that is going to happen here let's talk about what we are going to have here so the first thing we need to do is we need to import react from our react default now this process is not required on all the files now after react 16 or 17 this is not required to do that with all components the other thing you need to import is react dom so you need to import react dom from it will be from react dom slash client yep it's not from react but a different react package if you get into package.json we have this react dom as well so yep these two are the imports for now now here what we need to do is we need to access this particular root so if you get onto your index.html this root we need to access the root and we need to use our react dom to have everything render inside it so what i'm going to do is first utilize my react dom to create a root and inside this i will pass this one so let me say const root and i'm going to use my react dom dot create root so this is with the help of our react dom it's a virtual dom and then we need to pass where is our root this particular root so i can use my document actually document dot i can get element by id because the id here is root and pass it here basically you don't need to do that i am just doing that because i am recording a tutorial i am going to explain this so that's why we are doing this otherwise if you remember <laughs> in our src folder everything was already there so that's it that's the first thing we access the root and we created a virtual dom now what i am going to do is with this root i am going to render all this stuff now here I can mention what stuff I need to load. So maybe I need to load any type of component. Maybe we need to load any type of other stuff. Everything can be done here. So let me have information. So the first information that you are going to have is react strict mode and then everything will be inside it. So what is react strict mode react dot strict mode so this react strict mode actually help us to be informed with all type of errors and second check you can say that so if you get here if you search about it you can see this activates additional check and warnings that's it and this runs only on development mode only so this doesn't impact production build basically all type of warning you see in development mode so i need to cover this with uh, something like this i need to have a opening one it's like a tag uh, my opening react strict mode tag and my closing react strict mode tag now every stuff every other stuff will be here let me try to have a h1 tag let's say h1 hello now if I save get back here you can see it's working fine there are chances that this might not load so what you can do is uh, you might need to just stop your server and restart it you can see it's working fine so that's how this is going to work behind the scene what I did is I created a virtual dom uh, and I'm rendering all this stuff inside my root actually now you can see all the other stuff is gone right now all the stuff that we had in our source folder earlier it's not there we don't require it for now now if i jump here click on inspect and try to see our root and this is our h1 that means we inserted this 
this h1 is given by us now let me try to have other stuff let me try to have a p tag let's say subtitle or sub tag something like this and get back here you can see i got here so okay this is working so that means this is the base structure that we are going to deal with and everything else can be inside this react strict mode the problem here is do you want all the pages entire website here nope so what we do is we divide stuff into multiple parts multiple components let me create another one let me create a component or a different file which is app.js remember this app.js will be inside our source folder only click on the source folder create a new file app.js and here we are going to create a component convert this app.js into a component so we don't have to write everything inside our index.js so i'm going to remove this in a while but here i am going to convert this app.js file into a component now how to do that well there are few steps but the easiest way that you are going to use in future once you have idea is you are going to use rafc you can see react arrow function component and this is done because of the extensions we installed if i click on enter this is the basic structure you don't need this now in the newer version but this is the basic structure of a component now remember i am using arrow function so you will see arrow function here we are exporting this so all this stuff is here but that we are going to use in future now what we are going to do here is we are going to do the same but by manual stuff so what i am going to do is i am going to basically create a component it's a function only so i am going to say const and i am going to call this app itself now remember the name of the component should be same it's recommended so it should be same as the file that you are going to call this component as so i am going to say app itself you can use function itself also so things are going to work fine if you directly use instead of arrow function you can use the normal function things are going to work fine so let's say const app then we are going to have our arrow function that's it and we are going to return something everything that we are going to return will be inside these parentheses that's it and remember we need to export it currently it's empty so let me get here and let me try to return the exact same stuff let me take it here paste it here and you are going to get some some lines let me try to remove this p tag for now let me just return the hello only so what we did is we just created a arrow function and we returned a simple thing which is jsx i'm going to explain this uh, in the next one but we just returned some stuff we exported this app now what i'm going to do is i'm going to import that app here let's say import i'm going to import it from the same directory which is the current directory then app that's it now you don't need to use .js because behind the scene we are running webpack remember this is not default export so you need to keep things in curly braces that's great now this is our component so if i say app save is this going to work no nope. actually you are going to get an error you are going to see app as the text here so how to use this component well to use a component you basically need to convert this into a tag something like this so this is your app component which is a self closing tag basically so if i save this one now get back here you can see hello so what i did is i created a indirectly i want to say i created a function based component and this is all the step now the other thing the other way you can export is you can just say export default app that is other way and you can just say it as const app and save this one and now you don't need to use these braces and things are going to work fine now this is our default export and it's still here 
so that's all that's the basic structure the main aim was to start things from base from scratch without any other stuff now here if i want to add any type of css i can just go with new file i can say index.css and if i want to import it i am going to import it here i am going to say import and here i can directly import my css which is going to be in the same directory so dot slash and then i have my index dot css that's great now this will be applied globally so if i let's say i have h1 tag and i have font size as maybe 50 pixel let me save get back here you can see it's greater let me try something bigger let me say 100 save you can see it's bigger so that's how you are going to deal with this now in the next lecture i'm going to delete everything again yep so we can experiment it's we are at a beginner stage it's good time for us to learn i hope this lecture was helpful make sure you try to replicate this or just have information about this that what is happening behind the scene so what we did is we simply have app.js which is basically indirectly working for us as a component we have index.js where our main focus goes as soon as we load any type of react app we have these two import which is our react react dom we create a virtual dom we try to render stuff we have a strict mode activated so we keep every type of warning in check also this strict mode is activated only for development only as soon as we get into production this is not going to work the other thing is we can create component like this and add it on our page so currently we created a single component which is app which was simple to create we just need to create a function i'm going to discuss more about components don't worry but here's a quick idea we just have a function arrow function and that is going to return stuff into this parenthesis it is important currently we are just returning only a single line that's it since we are doing it a default app export we are able to access it directly otherwise we need to use braces that's it we then created our index.css which is a global style and we imported it here if I get back here, click on, I need, don't need to load it. Actually, I can get into header and here you can see this style. This is where our information about CSS is or H1 tag. If I get onto my page source, nothing is here because everything is rendered with the help of bundle.js everything from my source will be rendered from bundle.js that's it i hope you got the idea how to start things from basics now in the next one we are going to just create again and then talk about what all the stuff goes here how to create multiple component how to attach everything things are going to get fun now because now we are focusing on coding part our base setup is done. So thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now in this one, we are going to talk about components. So there is class based component and function based component. Let us quickly talk about them and also try to create a new project setup. What I mean by this is I want to clear this whole project. So that means I am going to just destroy this. I'm going to delete it. And it is going to take some time because there are approx 200, 300 MB. I can do this stuff behind the scene, behind this whole recording, but it's easy for me to explain certain errors that you are going to get. Okay, so I'm not able to delete this. Why? Well, the problem is this node module is not deleted several times or there are chances that you are running server behind the scene. So this error can happen multiple times. So this is what I'm going to explain. Just close your VS code and then inside your folder, 
delete all the stuff manually and then get back here then you will have option to delete it that's done now i'm going to create the project again think it as a practice session that's done now i'm going to create the project again i'm inside my practice folder let me clear the screen and what i'm going to do is i am going to have npx remember create react app then my taskmate this is going to take few minutes Now once that is done, let me get inside my folder which is taskmate and here I am going to open my VS code with the help of code dot. That's great. Here I am. My VS code is ready. You can use control backtick to start your terminal. Uh, let me clear this up. Use npm start. This is going to initiate my server. That's great. Our basic setup is done. Let me close this one. Now I have all these files. Okay. Now what I need to delete, what I need to keep, it's an important task. So first I'm going to delete this setup test file. Awesome. Then I'm going to delete this report web vitals. I'm also going to delete this SVG file. And I'm going to delete this app test chart JS and that's it. So I'm going to keep these two files for JS and these two files for CSS. That's the base structure. But now you are going to get certain errors. Why? Because well, we are importing these stuff and we have deleted now. So one thing you can do is you can get here and you will see all type of errors and you can just resolve them. Like this error exists on index.js. Great. Let me get here and yep, it's here only. Uh, we have error in app.js about logo. We have error on again index.js about our report vital. So here we have about report vitals and logo. So let me solve this. Let me remove all the stuff with the import and the execution. Great. And then inside my app.js, let me remove the logo.svg it doesn't exist now and let me also remove all of this code for my header that we are trying to inject don't worry i will be discussing this but let me save for now so what we are left with we have this index.js with our code in which we have our react stuff we have our css stuff and then we have a component which is app it is a default export that is why we are using it directly then we have uh, access the root and created our own root for our dom we are rendering stuff with the help of this strict mode and then we have our app component that's it now we are not going to do much stuff inside our index.js what we are going to do is we are going to play with our app.js in reality also with most projects you are going to have everything inside your app.js and component linked to app.js. So that means index.js file will be something like this only. There will be few lines of code here and there, but that's it. That's all about index.js. Indirectly, we are including app.js here itself. So it will, everything will be executed. So let me close this index.js for now. And this is the base structure. Now in the previous lecture, I defined that we have two type of component, function based component and class based component. So this is a fun function based component. If you can see it's a function app is a function and that's it. We are returning some stuff. Now, if you remember, we can write function either in the simple function like this, or we can write arrow function. We can define arrow function and this is going to work fine. 
the other stuff you can do is if if i make you realize there are certain shortcut keys like if you have a function component you can see rfc it is going to have a react functional component if i say enter so it is going to create this this whole function app exactly the same that we have but the export default command is directly here now in newer versions earlier what we used to do is we used to write something like this in the earlier version like this export then default then app something like this earlier we used to do that not now it's easier it's better to have things here only so this is the first command which is rfc we have function as it is simple return statement remember everything will be in the parenthesis i am going to talk about this don't worry so this is the first stuff what is the other one which is rafc now this is going to create function component but will be arrow function if i enter uh, let me remove this yeah so now we have our arrow function things are going to exactly work the same way we have our arrow function which is export and that's it remember this is not default for now but you can see that we are trying to have something in our code block then we are trying to return stuff that's great but then we have class based component we don't use them now they were used before 16th version but after 16th version we totally depend on function based component but if you want to see how they look you can see rcc which is react class component and now these imports are important because we are defining a class which is name as app and then we are trying to extend our component okay things are getting serious now now we have this code block also we are going to export this that is usual but this component should be imported from react so import is increased and also inside our code block we are not returning directly what we are doing is we are first rendering and then we are going to have another code block and then we are going to return so there are a lot of things happening in class based component and they are somewhat complex so things are easier with function based components and they are used now so this i just wanted to give you an idea that this exists but we don't use so let me clear this up and what i am going to do is for now i am going to have a class based component and you don't need to import them now these react import it was important earlier but not now in the latest version definitely you don't need to import anything in the 18th version so that's great let me save get back here and we have our app now if you observe one thing this is executable why because in our index.js we have this component remember this point that's great and uh, let me get into my index.css delete everything app.css delete everything so everything is basics now we just have information about index.js and app.js great now in the next lecture we'll be talking about jsx thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now let us talk about jsx what it is and why we need it well everything that we are trying to return here till now is jsx this is not html yep you heard it right this is not html the tags are related to html but it's not html this is basically jsx now to read more about it i strongly recommend the documentation so you will get an idea that it's a syntax extension for javascript that lets you write html like markup inside a javascript file so what it is and how we are going to write well the basic idea is we want to write some html code but we also need to write javascript that's where this whole jsx come into picture everything is going to remain same as html but here and there we have certain rules and i'm going to talk about them 
So for example, here, instead of this div, let's say I have this h1 tag and I have, let's say Shubham, I have this tag. Now again, I need to have certain information. Maybe I have a p tag and here I want to write maybe lorem 10, let's say some description. Now how I am going to show them on my page. If I save, I'm going to get an error. You can see these jiggly lines. If I get back here, you can see I got some error. Why? Well, that's the great thing about React that it explains the error pretty well. You have adjacent JSX elements must be wrap inside some tag. And then you have certain terms like fragment. So the first rule that you should remember this is that everything, every time we are going to return something, either it is a single element or it is wrapped inside a fragment. What I mean by this is either we have something like div and we have everything inside this div. Uh, then everything is going to work fine. You can see now we don't have an error. Let me try to decrease the size here for now. So if I save, you can see now things are inside a single parent, which is my div. So both of them are going to work fine. Things are great here. It's loading. But if I don't have a div, suppose I don't have this div, I'm going to get an error as usual. So what we can do is we can have this fragments. This is fragments basically. And then we have to keep them inside this fragments. Behind the scene, we are just going to load this, but because of the JSX rule, we need to have a single parent. Here, our parent is this fragment. If I get here, you can see this is my root and then my h1 and my p. Okay, this is working fine. So let me get back to documentation here. And you will see that we are going to mix certain stuff from HTML, from CSS, and they are getting together. We are going to get into these example. But here, how we need to convert if I have certain HTML code, we are just going to get them inside our return statement. That's great. So let's talk about other rule. Like if I have something like image, let's say I have IMG. Now remember, I should have these closing tags. No matter what, if I have a break, I should have these closing tag. If I don't have, I'm going to get an error. Let me save. You can see these red lines. If I get back here, you can see I got an error. Now, if I get back, let me remove this for now. Let me save, get back. You can see I still have some error. So let me add this ending slash, get back. Now things are working fine. So that means I should have this closing tag. Okay, let me remove. Now if I get back here, so if I talk about the rules, we have return a single root element. We just discussed this. We have close all tags. We just discussed this. And the third one is the naming convention that we are going to follow should be camel case. Yep. So now the names are changed because of the reserve keyword. For example, if I need to add a class here, I need to use class name and I cannot use class here because class is a reserve keyword for JavaScript. And with HTML, I cannot use that. I need to use class name and this will be solved this habit will be solved for you as you use different extension and you build up certain project so if i want to have something like active and if i want to add css i can have this app.css get here get active here and i can just have font size for now that's the easiest one maybe 50 pixel let me save get back here you can see it's working fine. So that's how you can have a class name also. So things are different as you move forward, you will understand that we cannot use the class keyword. There are certain other reserve keywords that we cannot use like for. We cannot use for because it's also a reserve keyword. So instead of that, we have alternatives. So I hope you got the idea about what JSX is for now. So that's all about the rules of JSX. Now remember, you can always visit this uh, new documentation. But this is the new method that we are learning. How about the older version? 
well things were different let me try to show you so if i get into this old version where have where i have a div i have some class name ultimately behind the scene it compiles to react dot create element then we are going to create a div then we are going to attach some class name yep behind the scene this happens can you imagine writing all of this again and again so what we are going to do is uh, let me try this let me try this remove all of this and let me also remove this because this is going to be direct so i'm going to have react dot create element i'm going to create a element and i need to pass certain stuff the first stuff is my tag so it's div is h1 whatever i'm going to create you can see the input then my properties so i need to add a property it will be an object and i can pass information like my class name so let's say class name and then i need to pass the name which is active and then i need to pass the value let's say shubham now this is going to create our jsx element if i save get back here and i also need to import react because here i'm utilizing this so let me use control space and i have option to import it let me save get back here you can see it's working fine so can you imagine that you have to import react you have to create an element h1 pass a class and then value nope if we are not going to do that what we are going to do is we are going to use simple jsx so instead of just undo all the stuff and we can do that think about it creating multiple objects it is going to create mess you don't need to do that but you should have information that what happened behind the scene how things are compiled so that's all uh, this is the stuff that we are going to do with now something similar you can do with fragment as well you can use uh, react dot fragments and it is going to work fine without an error let me save get back here but the easier way is right now is just to have these open and closing curly braces now you don't need this if you have a div or something main or section or any type of parent or individual parent then you don't need this things are covered inside this but if you have multiple lines that don't have a parent a single parent then you need a fragment so that's all in our jsx section we understood about what jsx is it's not html it's not javascript it's basically a syntax extension that help us to write html inside javascript that's it the second thing is this is complicated behind the scene we write this in a simple format but it compiles to some complicated thing great we don't need to dive deep more about this right now then how to write jsx well there are three important rules the first one is that we need to take care of a single root element which is our div our section main any type of element that we need to have to cover everything if we don't have don't worry we can use fragments like this the other important thing that we need to take care is to close all the tags it can be break it can be image that we are going to see in future we need to have the closing tag and then the third one is the naming convention since this is not html so we are going to have certain restriction we are inside a javascript file so if i say class it will be key term for javascript so there are naming issues so what we do is we use camel casing and then we have certain properties overwritten so class is going to be class name as we move forward we will see other names like here you can see stroke width is converted to stroke width so what we do is just dash is gone and this w is converted to capital case you will see with different other term as well that's it now the other power that we will explore in future is that we can insert javascript as well for example here um, now i can remove this for example here if i create a variable remember i am going to create a variable before my return because this is jsx here html and javascript is mixed but here i can use my javascript 
let's say const i have a variable as username and the value is shubham let's say something like this now this is a javascript variable which exists inside our function itself our component itself now if i need to use this inside our html what i can do is let me remove this i can use open and closing curly braces and here i just need to pass the javascript name if i save get back to my page you can see it's still working yep that's possible and we call this as inline dynamic content so basically with our jsx we can pass javascript code not just this stuff other stuff as well like loops maybe map maybe we are using some type of list so we can use map uh, we can use filter we can directly use other javascript code as well that we are going to explore in future but that's it for now i hope you got the idea about jsx so thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one Hey there welcome back shubham this side now we know that how to create a component how to add css on our website we also know how to add images so let's have a small app or small page now so what i'm going to do is i am first going to remove this and uh, let's just have my name for now uh, some basic stuff and i'm also going to remove the class just basic stuff so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create component let's say two component do we need to create here itself no what we do is we divide stuff into multiple folders so it's easy for us to just manage what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new folder on my src and i'm going to call this as components remember the name of the folder is in small letters so let's say small alphabets components that's it now if i need to create a component let's say header i'm going to store this inside here so basically only app.js and index.js will be here rest everything will be inside here or other folders that we are going to create in future so let's say i have this and i'm going to create new component let's say my header so let's say new file i'm going to have header now h will be capital and then header.js remember this point all components will have first letter capital now if i create another one let's say footer so let's f capital footer dot js remember this point the other point that i missed in the previous lecture was that you can save these file as dot jsx as well that means if this is app dot js i can save this rename this and i can say jsx things are going to work exactly the same way let me get back here refresh it's still the same that means you can save with any extension but i recommend with the js itself why well there are few advantages not in the term of uh, speed performance or anything else but just because of the readability extensions and few other stuff like this so now you have all the files with .js itself that's great let's create these two component my header and my footer so what i am going to do is well i am going to use my shortcut i am going to use rafc react arrow function component press enter that's great and then i am going to remove this it's a simple component with the return as header with my footer r a f c enter remove the import save now remember this automatically create component with header that means the name of our file similarly this automatically create footer name of our file great now what if i want to import them well i just need to include it here so at the top let me go at the top let's say import and then curly braces because these are not going to be default nope now everything will be the normal one the export function directly so i'm going to have my header here okay this is auto imported but let me say if i need to import it manually from then 
currently my app.js is inside my src so my current directory slash i need to get inside my component so it, let me get into my component then i need to get into my header.js so let's say my header save now i can use this header anywhere i want so let's say before this div i want to have my header and after this div i want to have my footer so i can use this so if you remember i can have my header and remember that's not how we are going to use component what we need to do is i need to have a open and closing here let me add my arrow and then close it yep so this is my header now you can see the lines why because this is one component this is another one either i need to add fragments or i need to cover everything into a div well easy uh, for now let's try to have fragments let me take everything add it here so this is my component header then my div and then i need to add footer but let me see things are working yep my header then my div and let me add my footer now so what i need to do i just need to import it import my footer now i'm trying to use auto import my current directory then inside my component folder then my footer so i just need to use something similar let's say get here and i need to use my footer let me save get back you can see i have my header my name my footer uh, it's working fine so that's how you are going to work with multiple components it's a simple thing for now we are not trying to do some rocket science but we are just importing them and giving them in a structure so that's the first step that i wanted to do which is understanding about multiple components now if i get back here in our web page what we are basically doing is we are rendering three things the first is our component then a div then another component i hope you got the idea now remember these three components are itself inside an app component so this itself is a component so if you imagine the bigger picture we have a big component inside that we have two other components yep that's it now we can have another component here later on we are going to talk about it the next step that i want to talk about how to add image so what we do is we usually have a asset folder let's say assets here create a new folder inside my source src assets now inside this i will have all my maybe images my logo everything that i want to use in my react code that will be here if i need to use something directly on my index.html it can be my favicons for example this favicon i don't touch it inside my assets here inside my src nope that will be here only we will learn with example and different projects but for now if i'm using with my react it will be inside my asset folder inside my src great so how i am going to add it well let me first add a image here let me try to copy paste it here so i have copied a logo let me get into my src then my assets and let me paste it here this is my logo.png okay great so now i have access to this how i'm going to fetch it well it's easy where i need first let me get into my header and here at the top i can say import let me give it a name let's say logo and here i can say from and then i need to give the path from my header.js well my header is inside my component i need to get back into my src and then get inside my assets to get back double dot slash it is going to give me a back directory then i need to get into my assets then i need to select the file which is logo.png now i have access to this logo now what i'm going to do is inside this div i'm going to create few stuff i'm going to have my img i need to pass this file how i'm going to do that remember 
the inline dynamic content yep we are going to do that we are going to remove this now if i pass logo here nothing is going to work it's a string basically so what i can do is i can use my dynamic inline dynamic content and here i can pass logo so this will be replaced here uh, here i have alt tag here i can also add class name let me do that uh, let me add it here itself let's say class name and i am going to name it as logo let me save for now get back here and this is our header this is from our app and this is our footer things looks fine i hope you got the idea and the aim was to include image the other aim is now to also understand about our css part so the css how i am going to do uh, add this logo so i have one option either i can have all the css inside my index.css but then what we prefer is index.css is for global stuff uh, that should be applied to our root uh, maybe some font setting that should be applied to everything maybe we are trying to import stuff that should be restricted for index.css then should i add to my app.css like this active so i can just add it here well yes and no yep you can add it here it will be applied so let me add it let me say dot logo and here let me have a fixed height of 80 pixel let me save get back you can see the height is fixed 80 pixel and if i get into my head scroll down a bit zoom in you can see there is a style now this style is coming from my index.css the other one is coming from my app.css Ultimately, you can create as many CSS, everything will be available globally. But what we do as a developer, what we want is just to differentiate at the time of writing code, searching or have a proper organized structure. We divide them into multiple file. At the end of the day, they will have access to everything. Even if I just take it out from here and save it inside my index.css, let me save, get back here. It's still 80 pixel. Why? Now I have inside my index.css. Earlier it was inside my app.css. So ultimately all these styles are merged here. It's more of organizing stuff. So let me take it out from here and let me add it here. Now if I save this, so that's how you can apply CSS. Well, the aim of this lecture was to talk about three stuff. The first stuff is that I can create multiple component and I can organize them in a single page itself. All the components will be inside my component folder. That's the first thing. The second thing I want to talk about how to include images. So I have an image called logo.png inside my assets folder. That means I'm going to store all of them here itself if it is related to my react inside my SRC. How I'm going to access it, just give it a name and then reach to that particular image. It can be in a different directory. So just read to that image and then with the help of our inline dynamic content, which is our curly braces, we can pass this. That's great. The other stuff that we need to remember is this closing thing. If I remove this, usually in HTML things work, but now we are going to get an error. Make sure you are closing the tag. The other thing you can do is you can create the CSS inside your component. Let's say you have a component name header. So you can just have something like header.css and it will be camel case. So it will be header.css. Now, if I say I have a name, something like, uh, let me give you an example, header top.css, then the name of this, for now, no, then the name of this will be rename to header top remember the camel case format for component file dot js file it will be capital first letter but for our css it will be camel case uh, let me get back here let me say header only and similarly this will be header only okay so what i can do is i can have these stuff here as well so i can save this 
and I can have for my header stuff and then I can include it. I just need to import my header.css so it will be header.css save and you can see still it is 80 pixel the image is 80 pixel so that's how thing is going to work we can have multiple ways later on you are also going to see that we can have style yep we can include that but we are not going to use that much so i'm not going to discuss right now but later on yes so yep there is another way which is going to create a file css file for each component and then attach it ultimately again you get here you can see now we have the third style the first one index.css empty right now the second one our app.css and the third one our header.css which is this one which is logo so that's how you can include stuff and again there is no strict rule but it is the unopinionated format that everyone follows that index global stuff app either the stuff related to our app.jss only or everything and then if the project is too big it's good idea to divide stuff into smaller css part so that's it that's all about style for now i hope you got the idea yep we are trying to mess up things because we are in learning phase as soon as we start building projects, we will have a better structure. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back, Shubham this side. Now let us dive deep towards a different topic, which is states. Now you must be thinking what is state and why we need it. Well, before that, let me give you a quick idea of what the structure currently is. So what I did is I deleted everything. I recreated the react app and then I removed all the unwanted file. If you remember, we did the practice earlier itself. So I have removed all the unwanted files as well as their import. That's done. The next thing I did is inside my app.js, I removed that unwanted code and added a h1 tag, a simple h1 tag. Also, I have cleared index.css and app.css and added some basic CSS that we are going to work on. My quick advice will be that you copy paste all the CSS code or if you are not using CSS, things will work fine since our focus is on React, but the look is going to be different. For example, here I have added some CSS for box or something like button. So I need some specific color for certain buttons. Since I'm recording a video, I'm recording a tutorial, I want the demonstration to be good. If you are just doing normal practice, you can focus on JavaScript and React, but it's a good habit to have CSS here and there. So your project is more presentable. I'm going to add and write more CSS as we move forward with the simple explanation as well. And here I have changed the font family and set the default margin and padding as zero pixel. Okay, that's great and we will work on them as we require. For now, that's it. Now let's focus on state, what it is and why we need it. Well, let's create a simple application. Maybe we want to work on a counter application. That means I have two buttons. If I press plus or something like add, I should increase the count. If I have a second button that is subtract or something like minus, I should decrease the count. So the flow should be simple. I'm going to create a variable, something like count and assign a default value as zero and then keep updating that count. I guess that should work fine, right? Let's understand this. So let's create the simple application, find out the problem and then understand how state is going to help. Right now, you don't need to understand what state is. Just understand the problem that we are going to face and then state is going to be a solution to that problem. Okay. So inside my function before the return, I can write my JavaScript code. This is my JSX. Remember, if I need to write JavaScript here, if you remember the dynamic expression, I need to use that. But here I can write my JavaScript. Remember one point, this is a component and everything should be inside here. Like you can have imports on the top 
but you cannot write some JavaScript code. Either you create a function and then use that. But other than that, uh, nothing is recommended. Do everything inside your component itself. So you can have a different component. Maybe you have some header, footer, but do everything inside your component, the code block of that component. Great. Now let me create that variable. Let's say let I'm going to say count and I'm going to start my counter at zero. Awesome. And I'm going to create that counter and I'm going to have a simple div again and I'm going to call this as box. Now you can see all my shortcuts are working inside my JavaScript file related to all the shortcuts about my HTML and CSS. Why? Because we did some setting during our initial lecture. Okay, awesome. So we have this div and inside this we want to do certain stuff. Awesome. The first thing I need to do is I need to present this count. That means I need to display this count. So I'm simply going to have a P tag and here I can use my dynamic expression and I can say count. Awesome. Now let me save this one, get onto our browser and this is our current result. That means we are displaying our count right now. Now why we have this box shadow and everything? Well, we have our CSS and that is going to work well. And we have this box shadow for our box. Awesome. Now let me add a button so we can have option to add and as well as subtract. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a button. Uh, let's say add. Let me also add a class name so we can differentiate it. Uh, it's going to be add and I'm going to have a button. Let's say subtract. Now I'm going to have a class name sub. Let me save this one. Get back here. Oh, awesome. Currently they are not going to do anything. Now what my task is, I want to update the value for this particular account. So that means I need to add some functionality or I should say a listener or I should say an event. So I can have on click. When I click on this button, the count is increased to plus one and then this should be updated, right? Okay, let's do that. Uh, simply, I'm going to say on click and here I can pass a function that will be executed. Now, there are multiple ways by which we can pass a function. But first, let me create that function. Let me say function uh, handle add, something like this. So let's say handle add. And what this is going to do is it is going to update the count with plus one. So I can say count plus equals to one and that should work fine. Remember this will be count equals to count plus one. And I can execute this particular function. Now there are multiple ways by which we can pass this. Remember if you are going to directly pass this function like this, that means it is going to execute on the loading time itself. So we don't need to pass this open and closing executable parenthesis. That means I don't need to do that. So that means it will be executed when we click. If I say this open close, it will execute on render itself. That means we are directly calling this function. So remember this point. So this is the first method. The other will be anonymous function. That means so I can have uh, open and closing parenthesis and here I can just define the function. So that is going to be count plus one. So this can be done the other way anonymous function. Uh, now remember this is a single line function here. This is going to be our return and this will be executed only when we click. Remember this point. Indirectly we are mentioning the arrow function here and otherwise we are just passing the function reference here. Awesome. That's the first step. Uh, let me try to do console here. Uh, console.log and here I'm going to just say count. Awesome. Let me save, get here, right click, click on inspect, get into my console, clear everything. So what if I click on add? You can say it's one right now. The count is one. Click on add again, click on add again, click on add again. Now my count is increasing. Basically I started with zero. I am currently at four. My count is increasing, but this is not updating. So if I do like, like I can see this, this result is here, but how I am going to re-render this? How I am going to update this? Well, that's where this state come into picture. 
I know I am going to sound a different version, but state is basically the current value of that particular variable. If I say what is your current state in life, maybe if I talk about your mood, you can say okay it's boring or it's something related to happiness or it can be something related to figuring out about yourself. So there can be multiple state for us as well. Similarly, we are going to have state for our variable and it is going to keep changing. I know this is a bad example, but remember it is easy to figure out things when we take some real life example. So what I mean to say is that our variable state can change. Now what I want to refer here is that we have this particular variable and the value is going to increase, the value is going to decrease. So that means it is changing constantly. So here the state of this particular variable is changing. So does we need to update all the elements that use it. If I say count is updated, I need to update this particular paragraph itself. If I say it's increased, I need to show the updated version. If I say it's decreased, I need to show the updated version. That means the state is going to change for this paragraph as well because the value is changed. So I hope you got the idea of what I want to say and what the problem we are going to solve. In simple words, we are going to have different variables or I should say state. We are going to have certain values that are going to change. And instead of re-rendering all the components, everything, we have option to re-render our required fields. Okay, now we understood the problem. In the next lecture, let us figure out a solution, which is basically use state. Yep. What is this and how we are going to utilize it? Let's figure out in next one. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next lecture. Hey there, welcome back. Now in this lecture, let us discuss about state and how we are going to solve this problem. So let me jump onto the documentation and here we have use state, what it is and how we are going to utilize it. Well, it's a hook. It's a default react hook. That means it's already there with react. We don't need to create a new function. We can just import it from react. Something like this. We can import it. So what it is going to do is when we are going to use this hook, basically this particular function, whenever we are going to call this function, it is going to return us two important thing, state and set state. Let's jump onto the code editor and discuss about it. So what we are going to do instead of using this let, we are going to convert this into a state. So first I should import it. Let's say import and this is going to be use state from react. Awesome. Uh, pretty clear. And then I'm going to use state and it is going to take some argument and the argument is the initial value of our state. For example, if I'm referring to count, my initial value is going to be zero. Now, if I'm going to execute this one, it is going to return me two things. The first one is going to be a normal variable that I can use everywhere, which is referred as the current state. That means what is the current state of my counter? It's zero. If I increase the value in future, the current state will be one, two as we move forward. The second thing it return is a function that help us to change our state. That means my counter. So it returns an array with these two value. Now we can use array destructuring method to access both of them. For example, I can say const and I have both of them inside here. Let's say count and then set count. Don't worry, I'm going to explain both of them. So I have created a state and I'm going to refer this variable as count it is holding the current value of my state, which is zero. And if I need to change this count, I need to use this function, which is my set count. Now, if I want to increase this, I can say to this set count, okay, increase by one, increase by two, increase by three. This is going to be the function that is going to change this. Don't worry, don't get confused. Once we write, start working with practical example, you will get an idea. So that's the whole concept of our state. The initial value is zero. Now this is not just number, we, maybe in future if we want to use string, we can do that. Uh, we can use arrays, we can use objects, everything. So let's do, let's understand about this in a bit. So let me clear this stuff. Now here is our count. Awesome. 
here we are also demonstrating this count. Let me save this one, get back to my browser. You can see it's currently zero and I can also clear this up. This is currently zero. Why? Because the initial value is zero. Now if I give the initial value as one, get back here, the initial value is one because we are demonstrating this current variable. Now how we can increase this? Well, we can just pass the new value that we want. So here if I say set count, now if I say either count plus one, something like this, it is going to increase the value. Now currently it holds the value, the current state value, which is zero. So let's get back here. Oh, it's one actually. So let me convert this to zero. Let me save, get back here. Currently it's zero. If I click on this, it is going to get into this function, access the zero and then plus one, which is one. If I again click on this, access the value, then the current state will be one plus one. That will be two. Click on this, again get here. Current state will be two plus one, which is three, something like this. So let's get here, add, 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 add. Now we don't need to re-render everything. We don't need to load anything. We don't need to figure out anything else. Our component is re-rendered automatically because of this whole use state thing. So this is updated automatically as soon as there is a change in value. I hope you got the idea. Now let me do one quick thing. What I want to do is I want to just try to print this in console. Let's say console.log and just print this. Let me save, get back here. Now you can see it returned two things, the current value of that particular state and the function that can help us to change the value, which is this count and set count. Now the naming convention we follow is the variable that we want to use and then set Remember it's naming convention. You can call this anything else, but we are following some standards. So you are not going to get an error, but it's recommended to use it. Set and then camel case. We need to follow camel case naming. So I'm going to have set. I need to add this term and then whatever the variable I have, which is camel case count. So I hope you got the idea. And this was simple. And we can do something similar for our subtract. And let's say I'm going to have a function which is going to handle sub and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my account. I'm going to access the current state of this with the help of count itself and then say minus one. Awesome. Let me save and I'm also going to call this as on click and here I just need to call my handle subtract. Awesome. Let me save this one. Get back here. Clear this up, add, subtract, add, 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 sub, sub, sub. You can see now our counter is working fine. I hope you got the idea. Now before ending this lecture or before discussing or jumping on to the next topic, I want to get into my elements, open everything like open here and here. If you observe, if I click on add, you can see this P tag is re-rendering. You can see the blink, this P tag is re-rendering. So what happened is if we are using some normal method, if we are not using this state or anything else, this doesn't re-render. This whole thing doesn't re-render or we don't know when to re-render or when to not. Since we are using the power of react, react has given us use state option that can help us to re-render stuff if there is a change of value. That means the whole application is not going to reload only the part which includes our count. Now maybe we are using count somewhere else or maybe just add something like a P tag again and let's say my count again here, count. Let me save, get here. You can see I have this count. Observe these two P tags, both are blinking. That means they are actually rendering again or I can have plus one here. So this will be uh, something like zero, this will be one. So it will be, let's say 10 much easier to visualize get back here so this is 14 this is 24 and you can see both are rendering again so i hope you got the idea now if i refresh things will be gone because the default state goes back to zero as soon as i refresh and here it's zero plus 10 so i hope you got the idea that's great i hope you got the idea why we actually need this 
Now you can use multiple of them. Currently we are just using for count. Maybe I have something like a product list. Maybe I have some to do list or maybe I have a different timer as well. So there can be multiple state and their default value can be different. But remember we need to just focus on these two terms to use them count to access that particular variable and its current state and set count to actually change it with a new value. Now one thing we can do that is going to be a fun stuff. Let's say I have a new function that is going to reset it. So handle reset and I'm going to set it to zero. That means if I call this function, my count will go back to zero because I'm passing a value of zero. Okay, uh, let me add a new button. That's a button. I'm going to have a class name, which is going to be reset. Then I have option to reset and on click, I can have handle reset. Awesome. Let me save. Let me get back to my browser. Now here I have option to reset. So let's say add, subtract, add. And if I say reset, it's go back to zero. So that's how this is going to work. That means I need to pass the value of that particular state. Here we are passing the value. Indirectly, we are passing the value, the final value that we want for our count. That's great. I hope you got the idea what we did. We understood what a hook is. It's basically a react function, but with some magical power. That's great. Now we took the magical power of use state. The power is we can change the data and it will be reflected on our page. Great. So we simply imported it. We use use state. It is going to return two things, my count and my set count, basically my state and set state. Here we are giving it a name as count and set count. Now this holds my value and this holds the power to change that value. Awesome. We then created a small app, added multiple option to change them and call them. During this whole process, we also understood how to pass the function and how to execute it. Either we can pass the function, a function name that will be executed on the click or we can just pass anonymous function like this something like this and here I can say set count and I just need to pass count plus one. If I save get back here, you can see it's still working fine. So that's how this is going to work and we have the option. That's great. We also understood how to reset. That means just give off default value, which we started that is zero. We also understood how to reset by just giving the initial value from which we started, which is zero. That's all. And the most important thing with the help of this re-render, we don't need to refresh page. All the changes will be there on our screen. Now, one important thing that I recommend right now is to jump onto the documentation of view state and you will have access to all the information that we discussed, like they have created age and uh, yep you state the default value is 42 and then they have access to both of them, the current state value and the set function to change that. Also, there will be certain pitfalls that we are going to discuss in the next lecture. What are the problem and what we need to focus on? They have certain other example as well and few other stuff, uh, everything that we are going to cover. It's a great quick revision thing that you should explore. Either do it right now or maybe end of this particular state section. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let me discuss about a quick problem when we use this set count. Now this is everything is fine. I'm going to take a condition, a specific condition. Suppose I have this, I want to increase count by three. I have this ad as soon as I click on this ad, the count should be increased by three. And when I click on subtract, it should be decreased by one. So what I can do is I can have either plus three that should work fine. But what if I do set count as count plus one plus one and plus one. If I save this one, what should happen? Either uh, it should increase by three or one. Okay, let me get here, refresh. If I click on this add, it just increased by one. Click here, 
only one but we are executing this three times right so what is happening behind the scene is as soon as i reach this function this function holds the value of count as zero that means uh, when i click on the add for the first time so it holds the value of that particular state the current value so currently the count is zero it set count as count plus one but it will be executed in the next render to our code but the current value is zero only when i move to the next line as well it's zero only and here it's zero only so that means we did zero plus one we again did zero plus one we again did zero plus one basically because the value is increased in the next render so let's say if i click here the value is increased by one now in the next render the count will be one in the if i click here next render count will be two click again next render count will be three inside this function count is going to stay constant i can do anything but the count is going to stay constant also remember don't do count something like this count two or three nope don't do that we have a dedicated function to change the value of count so this is the problem we cannot access the updated count value or we can we well yes we can the other solution is to pass the function yep there is a solution so what you can do is you can just simply pass the anonymous function if i give you a quick idea here inside the documentation they have the same problem which is suppose they want to increase the age three times h plus one h plus one h plus one and you can see age is 42 something like our count so what we can do is we can pass the function so we can just access our count and we can update it let's say count plus one remember now it is going to behave as a function and if i do something similar here so with the first call it is going to update from 0 to 1 now with the second call it is going to update from 1 plus 1 which is 2 and in the third call it is going to update 2 plus 1 which is 3 if i save get back here refresh add now you can see 3 subtract 1 add 3 it's not important but you should be aware that the state value is going to stay constant unless and until we try to update it using a function okay that's all for this lecture i hope you got the idea again things comes from documentation and they have given some great example earlier the documentation was pretty bad but now they are improving and i am happy for this so great in the next lecture let's talk about a different example instead of this simple zero what if we take a list and try to add elements inside that list oh it is going to be fun so thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now let us talk about our use state but instead of just numbers let's talk about maybe an array so what i'm going to do is i am going to create a task list and then we are going to experiment stuff so simple stuff first we need to import our use state let's say import and here i am going to have my use state that is imported from react now what i'm going to do i am going to utilize the use state pass the initial value and create my state as well as set state remember you can have multiple of them in the same component itself so let's say const and i'm going to call this as task since i'm going to store multiple tasks here let's say task and tasks great i'm going to utilize my use state and here instead of using 0 1 2 or something like this i can have a proper array now here i need to pass some initial value you can keep it empty but our aim is to just loop over this and try to print stuff that means try to print all the tasks currently it's empty now what i can do is i can simply add some values so let's say my first object then other one the other one so my aim is i can store multiple information for our individual task suppose i can have its id 
uh, let's say one for now then i can have its name the task name basically uh, so i'm going to say it is going to be a string let's say record lectures then i need information if this task is completed or not so let's say completed and it's by default it's false so that's how we can have information if it's completed or not that's great awesome so this is all the information about this particular task now i can have multiple of them i can have another one that need id name and completed and then few others so what i'm going to do is for now is i am going to copy paste it so i just copy pasted three tasks let's say this is completed so i can say this is true and rest all of them are false and let me have them on different lines awesome so this is our current value for our task we currently hold three tasks with different value awesome now what our aim is or basically what we need to do in this lecture is to loop over this task and represent them again in this lecture i updated some css so you can just copy paste them uh, since our aim is to loop over them and display them as our particular task just for the demonstration purpose okay awesome let me add a h1 tag here and i'm going to say task list awesome get here make sure your server is running and this is our basic task list now what i'm going to do i am going to have an unordered list and inside this i am going to have multiple list elements my list is going to display this task then this task and then this task great this is good this is good the task we want to implement is going to be a bit confusing make sure you understand about map functions so this this is a list remember this is a list which is our task awesome so what i am going to do right now is i am going to use my dynamic expressions and i am going to access this task now if i save get back here i got an error well basically i cannot print this task directly i need to visit individual element so for that i am going to use map now map give me access to the individual element if you remember i can just pass something like this so i have access to individual element here and then i can just return something return some condition awesome we are going to do something similar with a bit difference so what we are going to do is we are going to apply jsx to individual task i can create a box i can give it a structure as well as some css what i mean by this is i can access to individual task let's say my task and here instead of going with my curly braces then using return i'm just using this open and closing parenthesis so everything i'm going to write here will be demonstrated as single line just like this here if you remember with our return here this is a single line behind the scene so something like this i am going to get here and now i have access to this task so what i can do is i can use a li tag simple tag and i have access to this task now i can print it or for now i am going to print random here let's say get back here you can see i have three randoms don't worry don't get confused let us quick revise we had it uh, an ordered list then we had the dynamic expression since we are going to utilize a state and we are writing javascript basically here so we access this now remember this is a list so we applied map and inside map what we did is we access the individual task individual element remember the naming it's singular we access this now instead of using return what we did is we utilize open and curly parenthesis now inside this i have access to individual information and i can write jsx simple so what i am going to do again this is going to be my jsx and i have information about this task so it is going to behave a fresh one so i need to use this my dynamic expression and here i am going to pass task dot name so basically i am going to have access to this name 
for the first loop i'm going to have first then second then third okay awesome let me save this one get back here and here i have access to all three tasks let me clear this up refresh so i can see that i have an error yes i have this error about key warning uh, i'm going to discuss about this in a while but you can see now i have access to all of them awesome this is important make sure you understand about this it's it's super super important now let's give it a better structure so i can access all the information so first thing i'm going to do i'm going to create a span and here i'm simply going to print the id and title together what i can do is i can access this task then dot id and then dash i'm going to again use this task dot my name awesome then i am going to have a button which is just going to say delete or something like cross let's hit delete for now and uh, let me save this one get back here you can see it's working fine so we have access to our id and then we have access to all the information great remember this is a separate jsx so we need to again use dynamic value now one more thing one more interesting thing is now we know this task is basically an object here we are passing this so we can destructure this we can directly use my id here my name here and then the value of my completed if i want so yep i can say this so i can directly use id name and if i get back here you can see it's still working so this is our personal choice depending on our requirement if we want to do that or not but we have this option great now let us discuss about the other problem that we had is this warning so each child in the list should have a unique key prop what is this key prop well props are basically properties that we can pass one property is compulsory mandatory otherwise you are going to get a warning it's about key when we are using list now not just this li tag list basically means when we are looping over and we are utilizing this map to have certain elements so here we basically need to pass this key so each li tag is unique and either we can use index because it will be unique index 1 for the first task index 2 for the second task and index 3 for the third task i can utilize this index let's say index here i am going to access it here and let me pass it remember i am utilizing map so map gives me access to index if i use this directly so let me pass get back here clear this up refresh you can see the warning is gone so if i right click inspect here there is a key for this particular element now why this is important because ultimately react should know some unique identity about this li tag so if i want to delete it in future react should have information about this but index is not recommended why because it will change if i say if i delete this one now index is mixed up earlier index was 0 1 2 but now if i delete this i need to update the index for this one it will be 0 and 1 so it is going to confuse so instead of index what we usually prefer is pass the unique id that we hold so for example here we have task id it is unique for each individual element mostly it is unique if we are talking about maybe we have list of products each product is going to have a unique id so we can utilize something like this so let me save get back here still working fine and no error here so this is one option that you can utilize so the parent should hold a key value that should be unique okay that's all for this lecture i hope you got the idea well we simply created a new state and this time instead of some numbers we created a list with multiple objects again we understood about a new concept that we can access this list map over them and for each individual element we can basically display it when at the time of display the parent should hold a unique key value and again it is going to work as a unique jsx so we can have access to dynamic value for that we use curly braces open and closing one and then access the value and demonstrate this 
Awesome. Before that, let me pass class name to our button. Let's say delete. Let me get back here now. Yep, much better now. So that's all. That's all for this lecture. I hope you got the idea. In the next one, let us try to experiment with this whole case and let us try to understand and utilize the set task as well. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us try to utilize and understand about set task. So the aim of this lecture is to delete any task that we click on. So that means if I click on this particular button, we should call a handle delete that should have access to this particular ID. That means ID of that particular task and it should remove it. Awesome. So what I'm going to do, I am going to create a function. Let's say function handle delete. Now this is going to access some ID. Okay. Let me access it. Basically the ID that we are going to pass about our task. And then we are going to have access to our tasks. I can use that. I'm going to utilize a filter and I'm going to check if the ID is not matching or matching or what, what is the case that we need to do. So first simply, simple thing is let me say on click and here I cannot pass like, I cannot pass ID like this handle delete and then I task ID. If I do that, this will be executed as it is. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pass this in the form of anonymous function. Now when I click this, this function will be executed and then inside that I'm going to have handle delete with my task ID. Awesome. What I'm going to do is I am going to simply have access to console log and let's say if I'm having access to this ID right now or not. So this task ID is passed. I'm going to store this in the parameter of ID and doing a console log. Clear this up. Delete 5271. Awesome. Delete 7825 and then delete 8391. Awesome. So that means now we have access to this particular ID. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to update my task and I am going to filter out stuff. So how I can filter stuff? Simple, I can just set task and inside this, I can just filter out stuff. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to access my task. I am going to utilize my filter and inside this task filter, I will have access to my individual task. And then here I can pass a condition. If the condition is true, I am going to keep it. If the condition is false, I am going to remove it if the condition is true. So that means I have access to this ID and I'm going to check if this ID is not equals to my task ID. Remember this task ID is basically ID of this particular task. So what I'm going to do, I have access to this task, which is initially this is I'm going to select the first task. The ID first task ID will be 5271 this one and I'm going to check if the button that we clicked maybe we have clicked on the middle one which is 7825. So this is 7825 is not equals to 5271. Well this condition is true. We are saying it's not equals to. Well they are not equal. 7825 is not equal to 5271. Awesome. So for this item it's not true. Now let's say I want to delete this particular task. Awesome. So we are going to map from first task, second task, third task. That means we are going to map from first task, second task and third task. First we are going to compare my ID which is the ID that I pass from button. So I'm going to check if 7825 is not equals to 5271. Yep, they are not equal. So that means this is going to return true. So first item is going to stay there. Then I'm going to compare 7825 is not equals to 7825. Well, they are equal. So this is going to return false. So this will be removed in our new array. And then this is not equal. So this is going to stay. 
So this is going to return this whole statement is going to return our new list and we are going to set our new task. I know this is confusing, but if you understand about filter, it will be easy. This condition is about our task. Let's say this. So it's easy to read here. We are simply comparing both the IDs and say if they are not equal for us, this is the condition. They should not be equal. If it's equal, just remove it. Awesome. So we are passing this and setting it as our new task. Great. Now if I get here, refresh. Awesome. Now if I click on delete, it's gone. What happened is we basically create a new task list and we re-render this whole stuff. Let me get back here, get into my elements inside my root and my UL stuff. Let me refresh this. Okay. Now if I click on delete anywhere, you can see this entire UL is updated. Let me refresh again, delete UL is updated, delete this UL is updated, delete this UL is updated. So that's how it's working behind the scene. We update entire task and it is going to re-render our entire unordered list. So that's all. That's how we are going to update our task. I hope you got the idea. Now we have functionality to delete any type of task. One important thing that you need to remember that these filter conditions are important. Otherwise you are going to miss. The other thing is as soon as I refresh anything, things will be gone. So there is no control to you because we are not utilizing any database. So things will disappear. If we are trying to use some database, we can hold them. And later on, we are going to utilize databases for all these type of stuff. That's all. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now in this lecture, let us discuss about conditional template. What I mean by this and why it is important. But before that, I want to talk about a setting that we tried to discuss during the initial lectures. Uh, it was about sticky scroll if you remember sticky scroll enabled now i'm going to give you an example about this so as i scroll down you can see the line number four the app is still stuck there because this is the entire code block so this sticky scroll basically holds that information on the top that you are currently in this particular code block I hope you got the idea. This was important and I was waiting as soon as we have multiple lines, I can demonstrate that. So if I just remove this, it's a new feature. I know most of you might not even like it, but as a beginner, this works really well. So if I just remove this sticky scroll, get back here. Now you can see that app is gone. As soon as I activate it, you can see this app is back. So this gave us idea as soon as we have multiple functions and few other information, it get confusing that inside which particular element I am currently in. So make sure you activate it. Okay, now let's get back to our topic, which is conditional templates. What I mean by this? Well, we have access to JavaScript now. So that means we can evaluate stuff in the form of true and false. We can compare multiple things and then apply certain changes. For example, I can evaluate here that if this task is completed or not. If the task is completed, then only I'm going to show here. Otherwise I'm going to skip. That means I have a condition and according to that, I can display stuff. So what we need to do is we basically need to uh, inside our map. I'm going to do that. You can use anywhere. I'm also going to demonstrate that for class name and few other stuff. So what I'm going to do is I am going to hide them all. And I'm also going to show them. So it depends on our true and false value. If the value is true, we are going to show them. Otherwise, we are going to hide them. So we are going to create a button show, hide, show, hide. That's the current team. So we have a condition. If the show is true, we are going to display this. If the show is false, we are going to hide it. That is basically a condition and according to which we are controlling our template. Awesome. So I am going to create a new state. Let me call this as show and set show. 
uh, again I am going to utilize the use state and here I can also pass values as true and false so by default it is true so we have access to this particular state now what I am going to do is I am going to utilize this conditional template so the basic structure is going to be that I have a condition and I can demonstrate that condition so for now I ha just have show because that is going to be my boolean value otherwise we can create a value with the help of comparison maybe if this is greater than this or ultimately we need a result in true and false so if true we are going to do something if false we are going to do other stuff or just skip this similarly I will talk about this completed true and false so if a task is completed we are going to show something in green if our task is not completed we are going to leave it so we are going to talk about this but let's get back here so our condition show is true then I am going to do some stuff so for now I am going to take this task basically and add it here remove these curly braces yeah so here is my condition I am going to check if this show is true yes then this will come into picture other if this is false we are not even going to focus on this template let me save get back here currently show is true we are able to view this let me try to manually have a false value save get back here everything is gone so what I am going to do right now is I am going to add a button to make them hide or display so I can just have a new button here that is going to say toggle and the task is on click I just need to update the value which is going to be about my show and I can just reverse the current value about show so if current value is true I am going to set the false if the current value is false I am going to set it as true awesome let me save this one let me also quickly add a class name here let's say trigger something like this let me save get back here now you can see I have a button called toggle hide show hide show we have the option so that's how this is going to work we have a condition and if this is true then we are going to move here if this is false we are not going to display stuff now this is not just valid till here only we can have this to evaluate and add information about class names we can also utilize ternary operator to add some condition for example here if I add a class name since we are going to utilize JavaScript it is going to be dynamic value I am going to have my task dot completed if my task dot completed is true I am going to apply certain CSS otherwise I am going to apply certain CSS if it's true I am going to say completed if it's false I am going to say incomplete let me save this one get back here now you can clearly see the change the completed ones are with the form of green and the incompleted ones are in the form of red and I can toggle this stuff I can also delete stuff let me refresh things are back to normal so that's how we can have conditional template there are two things one is simple conditional template which is just utilize some condition and we are utilizing the logical and condition and the other is our ternary operator which can help us to do lot of stuff actually we can have conditions compare result and then we can basically demonstrate not just the class but entire different buttons entire different components basically so this is going to work pretty well as we move forward so that's all for this one in the next one let us quickly talk about some limitation about our state thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now let me quickly talk about two important points when we are utilizing any type of hook the first thing is you need to mention them at the top at the time of describing these component so basically here I am utilizing my app component so I need to describe them at the top itself we cannot call them inside our function or maybe inside these dynamic expression we cannot do that 
we need to initialize them at the top of our component itself. Make sure you remember this. There will be certain exception such as we create another custom hook. We can call that and we can utilize this inside that custom hook. But for now, you need to remember that these should be at the top. The other thing is we cannot utilize them, describe them outside the component scope. This is basically the scope that we have. We need to describe them at the top and utilize them in this scope itself. We cannot use it here. We cannot use it outside. Since it's a function, everything will be inside our scope itself. That's all about this quick lecture. I just wanted to give you an idea. So you remember these. I just wanted to inform you. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us start our journey with a new section, which is going to be mix of components and props. At this point of time, we are just working with app.js, but we have decent amount of code that we can divide stuff and also add new component. For example, we can add a header here. So I can add a header here and then add my logo as well as some home link. I can do that. Uh, also, maybe I can convert this into a proper card element that is my task card element. So there can be multiple components here to just solve this trigger. The aim of this section is to mess with things so we can understand more concept. So let's talk about first stuff that is to add a new component. I know we already discussed about this uh, previously as well. But here I need to talk about props as well in future. So I need to create multiple component and also talk about component tree. So the first stuff that I need to do is I need to create a folder called as components. So inside my source, let's create a components folder and I will add them inside this. So I'm going to first create a header. Let's say header.js. Awesome. And if you remember, we have a shortcut key. I can use RFC that is going to give me a ready-made component and with some import of react with the latest version, we also have access to underscore RFC that don't give this part. Uh, I don't have any problem. So that's it. That's all about our header. What I'm going to do is I am going to remove this div. I'm going to have my header here. Inside this, I'm going to just have my image, which is going to be logo that I need to include for now. Let's say logo and I am simply going to have a link tag. That's all. So let's say a tag and that is going to be the default home and I'm just going to say home. Otherwise, I'm going to divide them into nav them. This is going to be a div here for logo, but it, let's keep it simple. First thing I need to do is I need to create a assets. Inside this, I need to paste my logo. So I've already copied it. Let me get into my source, my assets and let me paste it here. Awesome. So I have access to my logo as well. Let me just import it. Uh, since I'm inside my component, let me go back actually and then get into my assets and then my logo dot png. Awesome. Now if I get back here, no changes. Why? Well, we haven't included it. So first we need to import our component. So here uh, I should import my header from my current directory, get into my components and then my header. Awesome. Now I can add my header at the top before my h1 i'm going to treat it as a tag so i need to use my header remember it is going to be self-closing so i need to use like this now let me save get back here and you can see it's working fine so that's how we can include a new component now this is done this is all done but what about this whole stuff can we convert this into a component well, yes, we can create a task component. Let me create a task list component basically. And I'm going to call this as task list.js. Awesome. 
and RAFC. Great. Now I'm going to distribute all this stuff. So that means I'm not going to keep them here. I'm going to take it. I am going to take everything from here, get inside my return and add it here. I'm going to get an error. So what I'm going to do, utilize react fragment. Awesome. And that's it. Let me try to import it. Let me try to use my import and have my task list from well my components and then inside that I have my task list. Great. This looks good. Let me try to add it here. Remember this should have self closing tag. Now if I save this one, I'm going to get error. Why? Well, I have certain task and function here. So that means these task and these functions are not defined in this particular component. I need to move them. So let's try to do that. Let's try to play with them. So let me take all of this. Let me pass them here or I should say, let me add them here. That's done. So now I have all my stuff here. Let me save. Let me also save this. Okay. I also need to take this app. I also need to take this import, save, get back here. Now I have multiple components inside my div, save, get back here. Things are working fine. Toggle working, delete working, refresh working. Awesome stuff. So that means this is working. Let me also do one stuff uh, inside my console. Make sure you check that you are going to get an error or not. Nope, there is no error. So if I try to draw a tree, that means my component tree at the top, I have my app and then inside my app, I currently have two components, which is my header and then my task list. I can also add another one. Let's say I have another component, uh, I can have footer. So that means um, I am going to have a new element inside my tree, which is going to be footer. That's great. Things are working fine and this looks smooth. But Shubham, you were talking about some prop things, some property things. What was that? Well, that is what I want to discuss basically. So we can pass information from one component to another component. At this point of time, you see, I removed everything, then paste it here. And maybe in future also, I'm going to divide this stuff into component. So how I'm going to do that? There should be a proper format, right? That's where some props come into picture. For demo purpose, let me pass some properties here. Let me say a property name. I am going to create a property and I'm going to call this as title. And uh, let me pass this as a string. Let me say random. So this is the title that I'm trying to pass to my task list. Now this task list has a property inside which there is title. We can access it here just like functions. We can access it here. So all you have to do is just utilize props. Remember by default, the name is props. And now I can access this. This is going to be an object and where I am going to have a title and I can print it here. I can print it or I want to display. I can display it simple. It is going to be dynamic array and I'm going to say props dot title. Let me save this one. Get back here. This is random. You see if I inspect inside my H1, this is the random that we are going to get. Now I can pass multiple items actually. Let's say title, then I have subtitle. Okay. And I'm going to say uh, test this time. And I can access props. Uh, and then there is another option, which is going to be subtitles. Save, get back here. You can see now I also have test. So that means there is some property that we can pass. You can call them anything and you can then fetch them here. So there is some property that we can pass and we can access them inside the next component. This is some basic example. Don't worry in the next lecture, we are going to dive deep with it. 
I hope you got the base idea what a prop is and how we are going to utilize it. In the next one, let us create a card, our task card, basically convert this into a proper card and reutilize it multiple times along with the properties. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us work on our component as well as prop furthermore and talk about some complexities and dive deep with props. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a card. I'm going to call this as task card. So each individual task will be represented through a card. That means this is going to be a card. This is going to be a card. This is going to be a card. So I'm going to convert them into a component. Let's say I have task card dot JS. And this is going to be my new component. Now one thing I am going to do is I am going to convert this, this whole thing. Yep. And it will be here. Awesome. And I now need to import my task card. So let's say import. This is going to be task card from my task card. Great. And I just need to use it here which is going to be task card and this should be self closing. Let me save this one. Things are not going to work as it is. Why? Because I have this task card. Inside this task card, I don't have this information about my task basically. So if I get here, I'm going to get an error that I don't have access to this function. I don't have access to this task as well. Well, if you remember, now we have information about properties. I can pass it here. I can just say task equals to. Now this is going to be a dynamic value. So I need to utilize my braces and then pass my task. This is a dynamic value, remember. So I'm going to pass this here. I can capture this with the help of props. Now everywhere I'm going to utilize my task, it should be props.task. Let's say props.task here as well, anywhere else, I just need to utilize it. Let me save, get back here. We have another problem. We don't have access to this function. So for a moment, I am going to take this functionality. Let me save this, get back here. Okay, this is working fine. So I don't have this delete option, but this toggle is there and I have information. So what I just did is I converted this, this whole thing into a component and I'm passing all the information with the help of properties. In the previous lecture, we passed something through string that was a direct value, hard coded value. Now we are trying to pass dynamic value. Get here and now we have access to this. Awesome. The other important thing that we need to take care is that we can also pass function something like this, this one. So what I have to do is let me give it a name as handle delete itself and it's a dynamic value. I can pass this function and I can access it here. I already have access with the help of props and again, I can just call it here with the help of on click. And now I just need to utilize this props dot my handle delete and then my props dot task dot id let me save get back here refresh delete 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 things are working fine so that means we can pass manual values dynamic values function values as well now this prop prop looks pretty odd i have this prop then again there prop and then again prop to avoid this we can just destructure them I know inside the prop, we have a object that hold all these value. So why not just access them? So I can access my task and then I can access my handle delete. That's it. So now I don't need to use this props props. It will be some normal case. Let me save, get here. Refresh looks good to me. Okay, awesome. 
now there is one problem that we need to work on that the key is usually passed to the topmost parent that means we don't need to pass key to our li that means in the new component we don't need to do that we need to pass key to our component now that means here so if you observe currently we are going to get a warning that we are our key is missing so let me save this file i'm going to pass my key here let me save get back here and clear this refresh now you can see i'm not getting any warning so that's how you are going to play with all the props remember this important point that we can convert anything into a component if it is reusable if there is some big chunk of code then do that otherwise it's not important to convert every single important thing into component if you are not utilizing it here you can see we can utilize this card maybe in future if our application is designed according to it maybe we have other pages as well where we need this card then all we have to do is just utilize this card pass the function that's it so that's how things are going to work now if you visualize the tree which is our component tree we have app we have header then we have task list then we have our imaginary footer now inside task list we also have task card now and we are also passing some props uh, that can be accessed in our task card awesome this gave us an idea that how our app is increasing in size and how we can divide stuff in future as well one thing you need to remember these components are great way to reuse all this stuff otherwise just dividing them makes no sense so that's all for this lecture thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now let us talk about component child or i should say children so that means we can pass some stuff that is going to behave as child for a particular component okay let's not make this complex but first let us create a component so we can experiment this stuff what i want to do right now is i want to show three box here one will be about our success a warning as well as alert they should be there so what i want to do is i just want to show them so i already have the code uh, i'm going to have a div and i'm going to hold them as class box let me give them some information so i'm going to have information about a p tag with the class of title let's say lorem 5 awesome and then i am going to have a p tag with a class of description awesome let's say lorem 10 if i save here get back you can see now we have a card and if i get back add a success class get back here you can see it's pretty much visible let me do something similar let me do it again and this time i have a box but with warning save get back you can see again i need to do something similar but this time with alert save get back you can see it's there or maybe i need some other heading maybe here i have heading as lorem 4 and here i have some heading as lorem 2 save you can see it's different for all now i can have some other information here as well lorem 20 save get back here you can see i have different information now this is great but i was discussing something related to component child right what if i convert this into a component yes i can do that so i'm going to create a new class and i'm going to call this as box card alert card something like this for now i am going to just say alert card dot js or if you want to give a general name then box card is better box card dot js and it's a box card now and i am going to have a div with my class as box but no content here that's it save 
now let me import this box card remember everything i am doing is inside my task list so i'm going to import uh, my box card from my box card awesome and here instead of this this div i can utilize box card as an element tag basically so i can use my box card yep it is going to have a opening and closing tag and between this i can pass this information let's take this pass this information and i don't need this now i don't need this now this is going to work as children for this box card so ultimately this will be passed from here it will get here and then we will paste here let me explain this but i also need to pass my class name basically if i'm going to have warning alert or success so all i have to do is i can utilize it as a parameter so i'm going to say result if it's a success or not so if it's a success let's pass success and all this information what we are going to do now inside box card we are going to access prop and prop now going to have two information the first information is my result the second information these children so i have access to result and then i also have access to this children and now if i want to utilize these both paragraph i can just say children yep that's it and also if i need to pass a new class name i can utilize this result but how i'm going to pass it here no worries what we can do convert this into javascript now inside javascript if i want to pass a text as well as some dynamic content i can use remember backtick yep i can utilize that and for normal text i am going to say box but here if i need to pass some dynamic content i can use dollar symbol open and closing curly braces and here i can pass this text remember if you read about string during javascript this was important so let me save get back here this is still working let me try to replicate this let me try to have a box now currently you don't see much value about this because everything is similar we just have two lines of code but what if we upgrade this what if we have more complex code then this is going to work really well let's take an example let's take example of box card here open and close now my result is going to be different this time my result is maybe warning and here i have big result i have a p tag first for title and then i have another p tag with description and then i have another p tag this time just normal p let me save get back here you can see this is working fine so now things are different now here i had simple two paragraph here i have three maybe in future i have some other content a image a button or something else so basically what i am doing is i am playing with this whole component now why i have this component firstly to explain you concept of children the second thing is to make you explain how you can pass different values along with text and the other thing is that we can define custom state for this component as well so maybe i want to have a close button so all i have to do is define a state and i can hide it don't worry let me explain let's say const i can have show set show i can use my state by default it's true great uh import is done and again i am going to create a button but before that let me cover everything into fragment so i have this div awesome and here i am simply going to create a button uh let me give it a class as trigger itself and here i am going to say hide also on click i am going to pass my set show 
and I just I'm going to just reverse it whatever the current state is let me save get back here now each individual box currently have its own button this hide button currently it's not going to do anything because we haven't added any functionality we are just reversing true and false but now I can add condition that if this is true we are going to visualize it otherwise we are going to hide it how well you know we can add the condition with the help of conditional rendering but there are other ways by which we can understand this we can utilize this show true value to actually utilize some css let me give you an example what if this is a div and uh, let's a closing div and uh, let's say class name here and i can use ternary operator if show is true then nothing otherwise if show is false then i'm going to say hidden and hidden has a display property of none looks good to me let me save get back here now if i click on hide you can see that's gone hide you can see this is gone instead of hide i can also use close or something else but i hope you got the idea that means with each individual component i hold my own state Component box one currently have its own show state. Component box two holds its own state. So that means these states are independent and don't depend on like the state for this one doesn't have anything related to this. It's independent for this particular section and the other one is for this section. I hope you got the idea why we divide things into component and why these children's are important now i can play with it so that's it that's all if i refresh things will be back but now i have option to hide it uh, things look good i can also take this button actually and i can add it inside my box itself so things will be better remember this part is coming from here rest we can add our own content for each box that can be common so refresh now this hide button is common for all. So that's all for this lecture. I hope you got the idea how to utilize children, why each individual component is important because they have their own state and it is independent. Also make sure we have these two important things. The first one is that we can utilize ternary operator to hide stuff. Also we have the other option to hide stuff with the help of CSS. We have option related to conditional rendering, but there will be certain stage where you will require this method and we can use our JavaScript concept to add normal text as well as dynamic content. So that's all. I hope you got the idea. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now before ending this section, I want to talk about a concept called as prop drilling. Now with drill, you can understand that we are going to dig inside something. Well, what is this and why you should know about this right now? So basically we create some prop and pass this information from one component to another, to another and to another. So that's basically drill from one part to another part to another part. What if here I create a maybe use state or some type of component or maybe just hard coded stuff pass it to task list access here as a prop and then later on also pass it to maybe task card access here in the task card and then maybe display it here or maybe pass again to another component from here this is basically passing some data from one component to another to another to another basically we are passing a prop and that's why we call it as prop drilling. Let's try this stuff. Let's say I have a const, let's say info, some random variable name and let's text is random. Okay. And here I pass this prop info, which is dynamic info. Awesome. I'm going to have this inside my task list. Get here. Now inside my task list, I can just destructure my props call this as info if i want i can use it here i can just console log 
or maybe I just want to display, I can display that, but I also want to pass it here. Let's say info and info. And then again, I can get here and I can access it info. And maybe if I want to display, let's say info. If I save, get back here, you can see this random is everywhere now. So that's how you can do prop drilling. Now you can in the in this stage you can also change the name maybe here I change it to XYZ I access it here XYZ and maybe later at the time of passing again I change it to something else maybe ABC then in further stage I am going to access it as ABC and then let me try to print as ABC save get back here you can see it's still working. So that's how prop drilling work but usually if this happens we hold a similar name we don't hold uh, different names so if we have a name something if we have a title we have some number we have some state yes we can have some state and we keep on passing from one component to other so that's all i just wanted to give you an idea about this concept make sure to just look at your component tree you will get better visual idea the aim of this lecture was that this creates a problem in future we will be talking about state management so basically what happened is this creates a problem because we go through multiple stage we go through multiple component so it create a problem we try to find out a centralized solution and later on i will be discussing about that but for now you just need to understand that there exists a prop drilling concept this is possible things work fine but as soon as we uh, have more and more components as soon as our application increase its size this gets complicated and then later on we try to find a better efficient solution for now we should use it as a beginner later on we will talk about other stuff thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one Hey there, welcome back. Now let us talk about styling. Till now we have discussed about some CSS here and there, but now we are going to have a dedicated section around it. So we can explore all type of method and understand all possible mistakes that we can do. The first thing that we already discussed earlier as well, that we have two default style sheets or CSS part, which is my index.css and my app.css. By default, we assume that index.css is global CSS. That means we are going to store all type of styling related to components or related to elements that will be available everywhere. Then we have app.css, which is basically a component CSS for our app. Now there are a lot of things that we need to change and a lot of things that we need to discuss around CSS and the HTML structure that how we write our project or component. So let me get here. Now one thing, one thing you need to remember that all type of CSS that we are trying to create, it can be component, it can be this app, it can be index, all type of CSS will be available on our web page. That means if I get here, click on inspect, uh, get inside my head scroll down a bit you can see all type of css this one is maybe from my index.css and this one is from app.css if i create few others maybe for my components they will be here as well so that means if i add some design to my h1 in my index in my app and in my component every style will be applied and whichever comes the last will override the previous one so all of them will be here Make sure you remember this. There is some restriction that we can apply and we are going to talk about it later as we move forward in this section. So let's talk about index, which is basically our global style sheet. We are going to refer it. The other point that I want to mention that there is no rule from react official. Yep. All of these rules that we are going to talk about this whole CSS. There are few basic rule that are from react official, but mostly are opinionated by the community itself. So there are certain companies that started following one uh, pattern, then it was picked up by a big 
part of community so they started following and similarly some freelancers started following that particular pattern so that's how this whole general structure was created otherwise you don't need to keep them inside component folder e even if you keep them any other name for this particular folder things are going to work fine because at the end of the day you are just importing them so if the folder name is different you just need to write that different folder but the entire community started using this particular folder name so everyone is using that's how things follows so let's get here which is our index.css our global style sheet one thing we point that this will be available to all our components we assume that the other thing is for what we need to use it so there are five main use cases that i want to focus on the first one all type of fonts that we import should be here so every component every element can access it the second one is about all our icons that we try to import it can be bootstrap icon or any other icon maybe font awesome icon anything else we are going to add it here then there are variables that we use our css variable so maybe we are following some type of theme so there will be theme color there will be certain default colors that we use in our app it can be about delete button success button something like this so we usually create variables here don't worry i'm going to talk about practical examples in a minute but this is the third one the fourth one is the common pre settings that we want to apply something like this the pre setting for my font family or the pre setting for my margin and padding so i want to apply on all the elements so all the pre settings then there are element level settings so like i want my default button should be something like this this one so i can mention it here for my button specifically for my button or for my h1 something like this i can mention here and maybe if i need to change uh, anything here inside my task card if i need to change that button i can specify that particular setting inside my task card component css basically so these five things will be mentioned here let me delete for now and include all of the five the first one my font imports so maybe i want to utilize my google font and i want to specifically use this roboto font or maybe popins so all i have to do is select this one and then i just need to select the properties that i require so i have already selected all of them i guess except this one let me select this and here you will have option to just view all the selected properties so i have a font popins and then all the selected one basically what type of font width i need what type of style i need uh, once that is done i can either link it or i can import it so i just need to copy this one get back here and here you can see i can just paste it so that means here i have imported my font the second thing if you remember i said about icons so for example i am going to use bootstrap icons and here you can click on install uh, there are multiple options but here we are talking about css so you have option for import you can just copy this one and get back here so this is our second import which is about our icons the next thing you can focus on variables so basically variables are common settings that you are going to utilize again and again common values basically so variables are basically common values that you are going to utilize again and again it can be color it can be other values in terms of numbers or other any other value so for example i need a quick variable for my um, this value regarding my border so i'm utilizing it here i'm utilizing at my header itself so it's a border color that i prefer for now just random case so i can just have a variable usually it is theme we create a theme and then have a structure like my theme background will be this my common theme uh, icon will be this so when we need to change the theme we just say uh, change four five colors here so i'm going to say just my theme uh, border will be this so in future if i want to change the border color inside my app it will be preferred here so if i change here everywhere i'm utilizing this theme color will be replaced so if i want to use it i can copy it here all i have to do is you remove this and i can use my var and then paste it let me save this one get back here save this one uh, visit to my web page you can see the border is still valid 
Similarly, I need to paste it here uh, for my footer that I'm currently not utilizing, but let me paste it here. If I need to change the border for all of them, I just need to change this particular variable. Let me create one more so it's easy for us to utilize them later. Uh, let's say for buttons, since we are utilizing few buttons here and there, this delete one, uh, this toggle one, same color. So I can utilize it. I can just scroll up. I can just use this color. Get here. It can be anything. You can give a name like theme red or just red, something like this, blue, any, any name you can give here. I'm just utilizing theme button, theme border since I have a habit to create entire theme. So let's say it is war and I just need to paste it. Now, if I'm utilizing anywhere else, I can just paste them. Okay. Let me save, get back here. Awesome. These are still working. Great. So you can create more values uh, in terms of variable. Now the next one is our common setting. Now there are few common settings that I prefer and I can just copy paste them if I want, or I can just say here, or I can just say here, something like my margin and padding should be zero. Let's say margin zero pixel, then padding zero pixel. Then I have a habit to use box sizing, which is going to be border box. Then there is one common setting that I want to apply, which is my font family. And this one is going to be Poppins. So if I get here, uh, which we recently selected, if you scroll down, you just need to copy paste this. So this gave us access to our font family information. So if by any chance Poppin is not going to work, maybe this URL is broken or maybe the server of Google is down we switch to default one which is already available with our browser okay i can have other one i can have something like uh, text decoration should be none list style should be none something like this so i can mention them here now the other one which i talked about the last one is element level setting there can be several element and common element that you are going to utilize like a default button that should be followed everywhere or something related to li or a tag you can add these settings here with default button what i mean by default button here is that at this point of time suppose if i remove this class from my button my button will look something odd it's odd right now so i can have a default setting that will be applied to all button but this setting will be overwritten if i add any type of class so for example, I can create a default button here and I can say that padding at the top should be five pixel and on left and right should be 10 pixel. And then there should be no border. Let's say zero pixel. Then the border radius should be five pixel. Um, I can have cursor should be pointer and I can also add a default color. Uh, let's say background color. Uh, something dark mm, let's choose this one only or something uh, different maybe this one and i can also have this color which is white let me save so if by any chance i'm going to use this default word button it is going to be this but maybe i have a specific requirement which is delete i am going to override the default button so that's how this is going to work so I can have this default button that will be applied to all the element. There can be other thing as well that we are going to utilize on all of our application like this a tag. I want all my a tag with the text decoration as none and their color should be black by default. Something like this, this a tag. I want all of them to be black and none. Later on, if I need different color, I can change them inside my components. Uh, then there can be li. So I want the list style should be none. No matter what, I need them none. Why? Otherwise you see that dots here when you work with li tags. I don't want them. So list style should be none. So that's how we are going to work with global setting. There are five major things and that's all I have discussed. Now in the next lecture, what we are going to do is we are going to talk about how to properly structure things 
and also discuss about component related CSS. So for each one of them, we are going to create CSS that should be applied to them. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. So in the previous lecture, we discussed about index.css. Now we need to understand about components. It can be app, app itself as a component. Then as we move towards our tree elements, it can be task list, then task card and few others. So the first thing we need to understand how our web page is structured. So if I talk about a website, you will see some header. So there will be a header. Then the entire website is covered with main and then we are going to have footer. Now main is divided into multiple sections and then division which is div and section. Also header is also divided into divs and navigation bar and thing, other things as well. So it's important to follow some type of HTML structure. If I talk about this, this is our header right now. If you just see, I have covered this inside my header. Let me get here, uh, get into inspect. And if you observe inside my app, what I did is this is header. Now, why this is important? Well, it's easy for browser as well as search engine as well as our entire developer community to understand that, okay, if this is a header, this should be some top part. If I say if this is a nav, if I'm using a nav tag, that means it is going to be menu. So it's easy for us to understand things. So that's why this is important and you need to take care about this then all of this should be inside main actually then if i'm using a footer it should have a footer tag so we are going to discuss about this right now and also apply some type of css so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new component let's say footer.js and let me do rfc now what i'm going to do is i'm going simply going to have a footer tag now this is going to be the parent element. So everything will be inside it. Uh, I'm simply going to take a P tag and let's say uh, 2030 copyright or something like uh, and let's say task mate. If I save this one, now I need to include this footer. So let me import it here. Let me say import footer from basically my components. Awesome. And then I just need to add it after task list. Let me save here, get back. You can see now I have a footer. Remember I'm utilizing 125%. Uh, so that means if I go back to original pixels, it will be different. Something like this. I'm using 1000 pixel right now. It's recommended to have 1200 pixel. Since I'm recording lecture, I am trying to zoom it a bit here and there every time. What I mean by 1000 pixel, my width, max width actually. Everywhere it's 1000 right now. So here you can see the difference. One big change now we have a footer. Awesome. Now let's talk about the structure that I was talking about. For my header, I have this. For my footer, I have this. Now whatever all the elements that you are going to have in the middle, try to have them inside some type of section so you can refer them. So let's say you have a task list section or if it's a small division, it can be a div. You will understand as you work. For example, this card is not a section. You are not going to call this as a section. You are not going to define this. But if you have this whole application where you know this is header, this is footer, you can keep this inside your main or your section or your division. Just cover this into something so you can refer this with a name. At this point of time, we have everything inside this whole fragment. So we cannot apply a class. We cannot call this with some type of name. And that's the problem. It is recommended to cover this. So for now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a div for them. And ultimately my aim is to apply a class. So at the end of the day, if I want to specifically refer any type of element inside this, I can say, okay, go to this class. Let's say class name as task list, go to this class task list and then select the h1. At this point of time, we are referring h1 here for suppose I am applying this type of font size or something. It is applied to all of them. Maybe if I have here, here on my top, on my header, on my footer, any other component, it will be applied there. 
but now we have covered this component with a class we can change things we can say instead of h1 it will be dot task list h1 so it will be applied to this particular component only i hope this will help you to understand things now if you know it's a section then call this as a section it is not going to differ much but it will help you to divide things into section and division division can be any small part inside a section so you can call them anything okay let's say these are section and i am referring to task list h1 awesome this is better now i need to do this with everything else for example i am currently applying some type of setting for my img but the problem here is you can see it will be applied to every img so it is recommended that if you have a specific img give it a class name and then define it let's say this is a logo so at the end of the day you can mention that okay for logo apply this width as 40 pixel so in future if you are utilizing any type of other image you are not going to get troubled uh, let me remove this for now since i need to cover a few other examples okay i hope you got the idea so that's done that's uh, about our section that we covered okay this is covered and here i need to provide a class name to my card basically now i cannot create a second class name remember it will override the first one so what i need to do is i need to utilize my javascript concept uh, since i can cover them with backticks and this standalone will itself be a javascript part so i'm going to cover this here and add a dollar symbol okay and the first class that i want to add is my task card awesome or let's just say card or task card something like this so let me save so the first class that will be applied will be task card and then this will be evaluated and whatever we get in return will be applied let me get back here yep it's still the same so that's how we need to structure things now if you divide them into divs there will be a different type of structure now if you have multiple items suppose here maybe you have other item you have other item currently it's taskless it can be something else it can be a section about uh, banners it can be a section about some featured product on your website so what it is recommended is to keep all of them into main we have header we have main and then we have footer in term of html structure so it is recommended to cover them with main so let me remove that for now since we only have one that's great now let me jump on to my component css i want to clear this app.css and divide stuff into components so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to close all of them and here let me create their individual css so let's start with the smallest unit which is my task card so i'm going to say task card.css there are two ways that you can follow naming either use as it is the name that we have for our component instead of js just use css or camel case so you can just go with task card something like this now these are opinionated these are not by default from react ultimately we need to import the css here at the top so these are opinionated and can differ from company to company or wherever you are working so you just need to go with the slash and then task card dot css something like this awesome now let's apply all these css for example this delete one or any other for our li as well inside our task card so first thing i need to do is open my app.css and also minimize this one get this on side and take it what i need to take i need to take this li add it here i need to take these li's as well take it here and i need to take this button as well let me take it here awesome i don't need anything else let me save this app or oh, now let me close this get here so let me apply my dot task card here so that means this is a particular li tag with class task card something like this this li tag with class task card or you can cover this into a div and then call this div as task card anything will work so let me take this also apply it here let me talk about the div one so that will be easy for you to understand let's say i have a div 
get my li inside that let me save and then call this as task card i'm trying to juggle everything so we have experience so what i'm going to have is now task card then li this is my task card and inside that i have li and then i need to go with the dot task card then my again li then again my dot task card li and then dot task card li so let me save this one get back here you can see all the cards are still working fine everything is working fine right now awesome so that's how you can structure stuff we have created a division to keep everything intact uh, now let me remove this we don't require this actually now yep it's still working so that's the first css part that we created for a component close the task card we have bigger wheel uh, which is our task list let me create a task list dot css part again i need to open my app dot css keep it on the right side and what is task list uh, i have a h1 remember for task list we already covered things into section with the name task list awesome so here we have our h1 dedicated h1 then we have few other things that are dedicated to task list only which is our ul tag uh, then this button itself and it should work only inside our task list and then we have our box now what we want to do if we want to keep this box open to all then i'm going to keep it inside my app or if this should be available only to task list depend on our decision so i'm going to keep this inside my app so if anyone any other object create any other component here utilize this box it should work fine okay so that's the important decision and then this hidden is going to work with all okay great so we only have these two so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this add it here and add it here let me fix their format that's great so we have divided stuff let me clean this one now okay yeah now the other few that are remaining is my header and my footer let me also create them inside this let me create a new file header.css and also my footer.css awesome let me get them here should be simple for header i have direct tag which is my header and then there is a image so what i can do is this image is inside my header as well let's say let's say any image inside my header now remember we need to import them so get into my header first and let's say import header.css awesome and this is done basically and the other one here is going to be for my footer which is a simple one let's take this paste it here and inside my footer let's say import footer.css let me save close all of them make sure you also import for your task list so let's say import slash task list.css awesome get back here everything is still working fine let me refresh yep so that's how things are going to work now we have divided everything into proper component based system all our component tasks as well as all our css you can see that's how it is going to work now there is one thing that is still remaining which is our box so we have option either we can take this uh, specifically box component css and add it inside a component if you get here inside task list we have this box card and here we have applied that particular box class let's do that let's do that let's say box card dot css all i have to do is just copy paste because this is properly arranged by default take it paste it format it that's it let me save get back here uh, remove this save take this main if we are using it should be inside our index uh, get it here save close save awesome and i need to import it here 
so all i have to do is import my slash box card dot css save get back here refresh box is still working fine so that's how you need to divide stuff with the help of your components remember the scope of all of them are still remember are still global for example if by any chance inside any of them i say anything like uh, maybe for button maybe if i try to say button and i say width has 500 pixel it will be applied to all of them because the scope of this css is global get here you can see the width is increased and they are in limit form because i have applied maximum width to their upper parent but if you observe and if you scroll down inside my head you can see all of these css are applied and these are global uh, if i open this one this is the app.css basically but this is my root from my index then the header then i have footer then i have task card then i have box you can see this button is making all of them 500 pixel that means it's global and css can still be accessed we attach this dot box so it is restricted to this box only for example now we have for this box only rest everything is working fine but now we have them for this box i can override them for better things like the default property is applied which is the color the font color which is the background color the font color but i can add certain other properties like this width or maybe margin top something like this i can have 20 pixel now the margin top is overwritten from the previous one so i can do that i can overwrite to have the default setting as well as the new one let's say 300 pixel for this one and look and this is fine so that's all for this one in the next one let us talk about inline css or inline styling Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let's talk about how to apply inline CSS. What I mean by it. So if you know that when we are working with HTML and CSS, we have option to use style to apply inline CSS. Well, yep, we can still do that. All we have to do is use style and then we have option to pass something dynamic and then inside this we need to pass an object with key and value pair so that means if you need to pass an object you need to have open and closing curly braces and then the key and value pair remember the first one are to pass the dynamic expression inside our jsx the next one are basically for our object okay and then we need to pass key and value pair so suppose i have this h1 I want to add any type of CSS property, I can do that. Maybe I want to apply some border thing, maybe some other color. I can do that. Let's say color. This is my key and then I need to provide the value. Let's use red. So I have copied already a uh, hash and then the color. Let me save, get back here. You can see it's applied. So that means we are currently applying two properties. The first one is basically from our task list css and it is applying all of them but i am also applying the inline css which is for my color now if i need to apply anything else i can just add a comma and apply the other properties for example let's say border and here i can provide the property for border let's say one pixel solid and some type of color i can use this for now only and if i save get back here you can see now we have a border as well let's try to provide a padding i can add another key value pair and let's say it's 20 pixel so it's clearly visible that we are applying some change get back here you can see the 20 pixel so that's how we can provide inline css now you might have a problem reading this so it's easy to divide stuff into multiple line you are going to see this a lot that these are these stuffs are divided either into line or we can take this we can create a constant basically let's say const style 
cons styles uh, let's save this let's have something like this so we what we created is we basically created an object store this inside our styles and now i can just pass this because it's a variable and here i am passing inside my dynamic css let me save you can see everything is still visible so that's how we can apply stuff it's an awesome way easy way basically to apply any type of css or anything else in line either to create an object properly and apply them directly or just have this object here itself so i hope you got the idea let me keep it here only so you can copy paste later now before moving to next one i want to make you understand about one rule which is that we cannot use dash for our key value pair for example i cannot say border radius nope i cannot say this something like this i cannot pass this because for javascript remember we are inside object which is javascript for javascript this is a minus symbol so to overcome this you will see we are going to use camel case which is border radius if i save you can see now we have border radius so this is pretty common we have been following this during our class name the camel case thing you can see we have this here as well and we also try to utilize names with camel case so similarly instead of this minus radius we need to use camel case for other name as well it can be about our font size so if i need to apply something related to font size i need to use font size let's say 28 pixels so it's clearly visible let me save get back here oh we are overwriting so not just with border radius but with other properties as well it can be about font size border color if we are applying that individually or any other property so that's all about our inline style thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now in this specific lecture, I want to discuss about dynamic CSS as well as dynamic class name. Now if you remember with ternary operator we applied it. Uh, we applied it with our cards. Let me open this one. Here you can see I have a specific condition. I am going to evaluate. It can be direct a true and false value boolean like this here. Or we can compare it with something like if we can compare if this is the particular number if this is greater than this we are going to apply this otherwise not so we have this condition but the end result should be true and false here we are going to get something like true this is true we are going to apply this if this is false we are going to apply this this is basically dynamic class name but what if i need to apply dynamic inline css we can do that uh, let me close this unwanted thing and here what I can do is I can add uh, a dynamic class name something like if we have show as true then I'm going to say green otherwise I'm going to say maybe red which is the current one so either I can have a box color property or I can just apply it but if I need to apply this I need to utilize back ticks and everything else so I'm going to remove this from here and I'm going to add a property let's say border color so it is going to be border color and uh, I am going to use JavaScript basically here so I'm just I don't need to use open and curly braces now because I am inside some JavaScript content only if I am inside JSX I need to use these curly braces I can say if show is true I need to have a particular color otherwise not so if show is true then i will have green otherwise i am going to have uh, red so this is going to be for red it should be inside quotes yep uh, let me have green so um, task so let me copy the green and add it here let's say hash yep this one let me paste get back here okay we added some border color mm, let me go with the two pixels so it's visible to yeah so if i toggle you can see it's green toggle red toggle green toggle red let me also go with my font color as well so this font uh, let's move with the condition like this save get back here 
toggle 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 you can see now it's working these colors are changing so that's how we can do this we can not just with this whole thing we can do this with button as well so that's how we are going to operate stuff but i wanted to give you an idea that uh, you can include dynamic inline css also uh, we have already discussed about this we can also evaluate the uh, dynamic class as well class name as well i hope you got the idea now here you can evaluate your toggle term so yep 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 you can evaluate that i am going to use open and closing braces i am going to have show so if this is true that means show is true so it's visible i am going to hide and otherwise i am going to say show save get back here i have option to hide i have option to show hide show remember what i did now here if show is true that means everything is visible i need a button to hide so i add a button to hide if show is false that means everything is hidden i need a button to show so when this is false i am going to have a button to show this is great i hope you got the idea we can control everything dynamically hide show hide show <laughs> okay i hope you got the idea that's all for this one and in the next one let us talk about scope scope related to our css thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one Hey there, welcome back. Now till now we have been applying any type of CSS except the inline one, any type of CSS class, the CSS file, it's available globally. That means indirectly it's here. No matter what we do, uh, we try to add some class name, anything else, but it's available right now. I hope you got the idea what I'm trying to say. It's there. So what's the solution? What we can do to avoid this? The scope is available to all of them. No matter what I can write something here, it will be available to other stuff. Let's say I have something like for button. If you remember, we did this example. If I create a H1 here, it will be applied to all of them because the scope is not restricted. So how we can tackle them? Well, we use CSS module and then specify this for a particular component to restrict the scope. Let's understand this with an example. Uh, best thing we can do is get into task card because we have a lot of stuff to explore. So I can create a module for that. Let's say new file and I'm going to say task card dot module dot CSS. Yep, that's the name. It should be your dot module dot CSS. Now if I create this one here, I can apply styles to my ID or my class name. So if I am working with any specific class name, let's say this one, give it a class name as title for some reason. Okay, so now we have a class name as title. So let's say I have this title get here and let's try to apply to my title as well. Let's have background color. I'm just trying to apply something that is easily visible, some odd blue for no reason and yep. And that is done. We have applied some type of CSS. Now we need to import it. We need to import this CSS from our task card dot modules dot CSS. So the first thing you need to do is it's not the regular one. Now we go with import. We call it as styles. You can call it anything, but I'm going to call this as styles because that is quite general from. And then I need to mention from where it is going to be my task card dot module dot css now here i have access to this style now if i want to apply anywhere else instead of title what i'm going to say here is remember this is dynamic now so i'm going to say styles dot title i know it is getting confusing but i want to show you the entire example and then uh, focus on individual part so if i save this one get back here you can see i have a background i i took this odd color so it's visible let me try to take other color and that is easy to eyes uh, okay let's take something light 
save you can see it's visible we have this blue color in the background so that means this is working this title is applied here to our span but this should be also global right if i add this title anywhere else let's go with any type of other text inside my header i have this a let me add the class name title let me save get back here it's not blue the background is not blue so how this is working well here is the trick if i get here get into this inspect we have some other class name we applied title but here you can see it's task card underscore title and then some random number and alphabets but if i go here get into inspect it's title only how things are working it's it's confusing to me we applied title it's working here but not here also let me try to open my style what is happening here we applied title but now it is task card underscore title or something so when we work with module.css things are not as simple our class name is converted into some unique name it will be converted according to our module which is task card underscore whatever the css we are using it is converted according to the component we have task card component so we have converted the name of our property into task card which is our component then the class name that we are applying and then some random alphabet and numbers so this is going to be unique to this particular component only so the scope is limited even if i use this title anywhere else like this nothing is going to happen because the scope is now limited to my task card now if i import this inside my task card i have access to all these styles which is my title or anything else and then if i want to apply title anywhere else i can just say styles dot title now it can be any other property if i want to apply it is going to work in similar way i hope you got the idea of what we just did we restricted the scope of our css now this css can only be utilized by our task card even if we apply to header it is not going to work it will work inside our card itself make sure you remember this till now we have been utilizing different properties with css but these were global now finally we restricted this with our component remember this only works with class and ids this class and id if i say button or something like this for example if i say this to span let's say span and have some background color or anything else it will be applied to all that means it will not be converted with some magic name or number copy and paste here save here get back here you can see this span is span but if i have some title or anything else let's say something like id here let's give id name random let me save get back here open this one now this random is converted into task card underscore random underscore something so it is converted into something unique that is specifically to our component that's it for css we tried all type of experiment ultimately we will build habit and try to use all of them except inline i don't like inline basically i try to avoid it i either go with the component one it's much easier for me to maintain them or if our project is small i keep everything inside my app if our project is big i divide them into component also if i want to maintain the scope i use module but i avoid inline totally i use dynamic class names yep i use them but not the inline one like this i don't use them i avoid i try to avoid them i hope you got the idea that's all and i see you guys in the next one